I'm Moana Hope, most people probably know. I've grown up playing at Green Bay Football Club and now I play for Collingwood Football Club. I grew up in Glenroy, born and bred. My first year ever I played at Hatfield. From the second year all the way up to year under 12, it's Glenroy Football Club. I'm one of 14, um, and the reason why I got into it was my dad and my brothers. I used to watch all their games from the age of three. It was community football, so it was the best type of football. So proud. Oh, Local footy is really important, I think, you know, especially uh, Glenroy being the suburb and this being uh, the main supplier of sports for the community. You look at what Glen Murray trying to do here, trying to bring up a women's team and, and in the background is my niece who just finished under 12, so at the moment she hasn't got a pathway. So Melanie's played for Glen Murray from the same age as me, from the age of 7, and she is now too old to play boys football. So she's excited about the girls team, aren't you? Very. So she's extremely competitive, not as good as me. Calm down. Probably a few kids are are not on the right road and I think if you give them that, that sport or that outlet to go and, and meet new people, it can benefit the community in more ways than one. What do I say to girls? It doesn't matter who you are, what your skill level you are, what fitness level you are, it's a good environment to be in, it's fun, you meet new mates. This is where you want to be, so come down and have a kick. So I'm Claire Johnston and I'm an accredited cricket bat maker and the first female in the world. I um, learnt how to make cricket bats from Ian Cullen. There's a lot of bats out there for men and I felt that there was an opportunity there to actually work with women to make better bats and to actually make them for their style. So recently I was commissioned to make five cricket bats for the... Good evening councillors, members of the gallery and to our viewers live streaming tonight's meeting. My name is Councillor Dale Martin and I'm the Chairperson of the Urban Planning Committee. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to tonight's meeting. Our meeting is being held on the traditional country of the Wurundjeri people and I wish to acknowledge them as traditional owners of the land. I would like to pay my respects to their Elders, past and present, and the Elders from other communities who may be here today. I acknowledge that currently many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have made more than home and in doing so have contributed to the positive rich diversity of this municipality. Members of the gallery, please note this urban planning meeting is being recorded and web streamed live on Council's website and Facebook. This recording will also be available as video on demand. Gallery attendees are advised that they will be recorded during this meeting. Councillors, this is just a reminder that in line with the adopted Councillor Conduct Principles as outlined in the Councillor Code of Conduct, Councillors should ensure that they conduct themselves in the meeting with integrity, impartiality and exercise their responsibilities in the interests of the local community and not improperly seek to confer or advantage any person. This behaviour will support the principles for leadership and good governance that secures public confidence in the office of councillor. So I'd like to begin tonight by introducing the councillors and officers that are here in attendance. Um, so first up, we have uh, our Deputy Mayor, Councillor Natalie Abu. Evening. Councillor Sue Bolton. Hi. Councillor Anna Olivia Carly Hannon. Good evening. Councillor Helen Davidson. Good evening. Our Mayor, Councillor John Kavanagh. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Councillor Jess Dorney. Good evening. Councillor Alia Farmer. Hi. And Councillor Mark Riley. Good day. The officers in attendance tonight are Group Manager of City Development, Philip Priest. Our Planning Coordinator, Darren Camilleri. Our Planning Coordinator, Mark Hughes. Our Planning Coordinator, uh, our Planning Coordinator, Narelle Jennings. Uh, Unit Manager of Governance, Sally Curran. And our Governance Officer, Saskia Hunter. I would like to ask councillors if there are any apologies for tonight's meeting. Yes, I've got an apology from Councillor Yildiz. Okay, thank you. Um, so, Councillor Council finally signalled that we have a, um, an apology for Councillor Yildiz. Um, is there a seconder? No, no Councillor Kavanagh. Um, so, is there any discussion to that item? Okay, so I'll put that Councillor Yildiz's apology to that Councillor Farnley's apology to the vote. Um, all those in favour? Declare that carried. <coughs> Moving on to the minutes, um, could I please have a motion for the adoption of the minutes of the meeting held on the 29th of November 2017? Councillor Davidson. Uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor Raboot. Is there any discussion to that item? No, in that case, I'll put that to a vote. Um, all those in favour? All those against? Declare that carried. Are there any councillors that may have a declaration of interest or conflict of interest for tonight's meeting? 
Uh, Councillor Kavanagh. Yeah, I, I want to declare uh, an indirect uh, conflict by close association on DED 1517-79 West Street, Hadfield. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Um, are there any other conflicts? Uh, Councillor Raboot. Uh, yes, I need to disclose a, a conflicting personal interest with uh, 77 to 83 Nicholson Street, which is DED 117-17. Okay, thank you, Councillor Raboot. Um, any other council? Yeah. Councillor Davidson? And I'll also declare a conflict on DED uh, 11517 for West Street, um, just in relation to a possible association, um, just to be cautious. Okay, thank you, Councillor Davidson. So I'd like to start by giving everyone an outline of how the Urban Planning Committee will run this evening. The relevant planner will begin each agenda item by introducing the report and officers' recommendations. I will then give any objectors the opportunity to move to the lectern to make their submission. After this time, the applicant will be given the opportunity to speak. If you are making a submission, please clearly state your name and address for the record. You are requested to present viewpoints clearly and concisely on why you support or oppose an application. Please do not repeat what earlier speakers have said and keep the discussion focused on relevant issues and points not previously raised. If you are opposed to the planning application, would you please inform the committee why you are opposed and suggest an alternative approach which would satisfy your concerns. Please use this opportunity to focus on your concerns rather than the matter of detail in the officer's report. Please note that there is a limit of three minutes for each speaker, but as chairperson I reserve the right to increase or reduce the time available to any speaker. I ask that all attendees in the gallery please be respectful at all times and give everyone that speaks the opportunity to state their position uninterrupted. We will now commence proceedings tonight by moving on to the first item, DCS 7317, proposed sale of council land at Gordon to Preston Street, Coburg, D 1744 um, Now, I'd just like to note that we don't have a, uh, an officer making a presentation to this uh, report tonight. Um, but we will be taking submissions um, from the gallery, um, followed by uh, the motion, which is listed in the report, for a, another report to come back to council at a later date. So um, I'd like to start by asking, are there any objectors in the gallery that would like to speak to this item? No? Okay, thank you. Um, in that case... Um, I'll actually ask for councillors if we have a motion on this item. Councillor Kavanagh. I'm happy to move the officer recommendation on page three of the report. And if I have a second, then I'll speak to it. Uh, seconded by <laughs> Councillor Raboot. Uh, yes, this is basically a procedural matter at this point to, uh, to have given an opportunity for uh, submitters to make a submission tonight. Um, even though uh, it's made no one appearing tonight, there have been people who have made submissions. And as it says in the... Uh, in the officer recommendation, a report will come to council's consideration at a later date. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Councillor Boone, do you wish to say? I'll reserve the right to speak to it. No problems. Um, is there any other discussion from other councillors? No. Uh, in that case, um, I'll put that agenda item to the vote. Um, all those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. So moving on to the presentation of reports. We now commence with a presentation and I'll pass over to officers for the first agenda item of tonight, which is 81A Bell Street, Coburg, MPS 2013-859A. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, so just up on the screen, we've got the uh, presentation, which I'll bring up. Uh, the proposal before us here uh, at 81A Bell Street uh, is end of my presentation, sorry. Uh, we have a proposed amendment to an existing planning permit, uh, which allows for an apartment development. Current, uh, the current approval allows for an apartment development. And the proposal is to amend that existing approval for an aged care facility uh, and maintaining the existing building envelope, so the, exact, the same height, generally speaking the same building envelope with some modifications uh, to that layout. Uh, the um, proposal also now includes a reduction in loading bay requirements and to display advertising signage. The amendment seeks 
uh, also to delete condition 13A of the existing permit, which relates to the um, reuse of existing materials from the former Coburg High School. Uh, so I should, should say that the site is the former Co Coburg High School. Uh, there's also an existing section 173 agreement on the site, which the applicant seeks to, uh, with council's consent, to end that agreement while entering a new agreement, which is required by condition 17 of the permit. Uh, so if I take you to uh, So on the screen now we have the, the proposed layout of the development uh, with entry from Bell Street which is on the right hand side of the screen. Rodder Street is to the the, um, the eastern side of the site. North is to the right by the way. Uh, so Rodder Street is on the bottom of the screen there. Access from Bell Street, a secondary access for service vehicles only is on uh, off Rodder Street as well. <clears throat> and then an additional access further along, which is for vehicle access for residents only, is proposed from Rodder Street as well. Uh, central to the site is some uh, amenities for future residents for, of the aged care facility and retirement village, including um, Bowling Green and uh, some other passive recreational facilities there. Uh, in elevation, the proposal, uh, as I said, maintains typically the same uh, height and footprint as the existing proposal. Uh, it's a bit hard to see it at that size, but there's the, the previous layout is in red. Uh, so there's been some minor changes uh, that can be seen on the screen there. Uh, through the process, the applicant has amended the application to reduce the height of the building at the southern end of the site. So you can see here there's a reduction of two to three levels at the end of the site here to, uh, I guess, better address the impact on residents on the southern end of the site. These elevations are the south and west elevations, as I was just saying, a reduction in the height through the, the building here of three storeys uh, to address residents on the southern end of the site. Some perspectives to help you visualise the proposal. This is from Bell Street uh, with Rodder Street opposite. And then moving to opposite the council offices, looking across to Bridges Reserve uh, on the right hand side. And then closer from Bridges Reserve, looking at that interface there. <clears throat> and then from within the reserve uh, up near the, the leisure centre. Looking from Rodder Street, this is um, the proposal that was first put to council for the amendment, uh, including this <coughs> portion of the development here. This is now the modified scheme that's been recently submitted and amended by the applicant. And again, from Rodder Street, uh, the top image, the previous uh, proposal and or the originally amended proposal and now the, the recently amended proposal. And then again, a little bit closer so you can get a sense of the, um, I guess, uh, the changes that have been made to this portion of the building here. And some overshadowing diagrams which indicate the extent of shadow that would be cast uh, at the equinox on Bridges Reserve in the morning and then through to residential properties in the afternoon. This is the extent of the, the red line indicates the extent of the existing uh, approval and the extent of shadowing there. So there is some minor improvements to the shadowing as a result of this amendment. <clears throat> so key considerations are consistency with the activity centre zone, uh, amenity impacts to surrounding properties, internal amenity for future residents, and the appropriateness of ending the existing Section 173 agreement. So it's recommended that the Urban Planning Committee issue a notice of decision to amend the planning permit with the key conditions recommended in the officer report to uh, modify the external materials and detailed design of the proposal and to uh, achieve some improved ESD outcomes, including increased bicycle parking facilities. Also to amend condition 17, which will require, which should require a cash in lieu payment instead of requiring a reserve of 199 metres squared in the northeast, northeast corner of the site. Uh, and it's also recommended as part B of the recommendation that council end the, or the Urban Planning Committee end the Section 173 agreement registered on title, which requires the provision of a reserve in the northwest corner of the site, 
which is uh, what I just alluded to previously. <coughs> and this is dependent upon entering a new Section 173 agreement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so now we'll ask um, if there are any objectors here tonight that wish to speak to this item. <coughs> Please, please come to the lectern, um, state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, good evening, my name is Peter Robertson. I live at 44 Water Street. I've lived in the property for about 14 years. And as many people know about <coughs> this site, um, I will speak to the broader issues beside the, <coughs> the specifics of this site and the amendments. The reality is we're at the point in now of actually facilitating the privatisation of public land we're seeing this at present today in Federation Square, what's happening in the, all across Victoria and Melbourne. This site was once a high school, sold by Jeff Kennett 15 years ago, 16 years ago. Uh, the real estate agent in charge of that was Ted Bovey. Uh, it's gone through now seven different property developers. The argument that this is somehow is a better solution than what has preceded it is fatuous. It is a business-driven, greed-driven proposal of massive scale that will set a dangerous precedent, as will the Shea development, for the remainder of our community. Ryman are in it for profit. They are in it for the maximisation of return to their shareholders that sit in New Zealand through the business model of making money of aged, dying people. It is a good site for an aged care facility, but this is too big. It is massive in scale. And remember, it is predicated on one thing, maximising profit for a private company. So I understand we are largely impotent in this, unfortunately, because of state government planning laws and the decisions of our current planning minister. And I feel very, very sorry for many of the councillors here that I hold in deep respect that unfortunately I fear that you're going to facilitate the end game of what has been a very, very sad, sad piece of history to think that that was once a prestige high school and now it's going to be used to maximise the profit of a listed overseas company. It's too big. Thank you, Peter. Are there any other objectors that wish to um, speak to this item? Okay. Oh, come forward. Thank you. Uh, I just want to talk. Sorry, please Sorry. state your name and address. I'm Clint here, and uh, my address is 28 Rodder Street, so I'm not too far from here. I just want to speak briefly about the proposal or suggestion by a number of submissions in the last since the last amendment to um, incorporate a community space or art gallery or something to that effect in the area that's currently listed as a commercial space on the northeast corner of the site. Um, I, I know the idea wasn't, hasn't been floated by the developer just yet, but early discussions show that they're um, interested in the idea um, and favour the idea potentially above uh, the commercial proposal, which was a requirement uh, under the, I think, the planning scheme. Um, so far, it sounds as though there, there isn't uh, a mechanism to support that community space, which would be for the betterment of all local residents, the community, um, and the community in this case includes the, the current residents and the incoming Ryman residents, if the, if the proposal is approved. Um, and I'd, I'd like to explore that idea and see what can be put in place to, um, to facilitate the, that community space to help the new residents integrate with the existing residents and to have more community focus to the development. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other objectors, please? Uh, Siglindi, I live at 19 Rutter Street, COVID. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, one thing of great concern, I know you've mentioned that some levels have been taken off in one place, but they've been added on elsewhere, which was not mentioned. So there's no actual reduction at all. They've just been moved around a little bit. So some residents will um, perhaps uh, not be impacted so much and others will be impacted to a greater extent. 
I um, also read in the report that um, council didn't support the Bell Street entry and exit and uh, that they were only talking about it in terms of staff and visitor access. So that still leaves all the uh, residents of the site exiting and entering onto Rod Street, which um, I've noted is estimated as a thousand extra car trips a day, which is pretty significant in a very narrow street. And I just can't believe that anyone's actually walked down to the end of the street who thinks that's possible down the laneway that connects uh, Bell and Rodder. And then down Rodder and out onto Harding Street, it's not even possible. Um, and that the, um, I appreciate that there's already a permit on this site and that this is, fits within the envelope of that, but that permit was crazy as well. So I understand that at VCAB that's probably what will be given to them, but I still think it's appalling and it completely disrespects all the people that live around that building and whose um, houses and uh, gardens are going to be greatly um, affected by the shade and the traffic. Um, and the other thing was the um, replication of uh, recreation activities within. I think that uh, there's been talk about uh, housing for elderly people within uh, their community and you would expect that those people would integrate into a community so to provide um, a bowling green when one is so close and a swimming pool when one is so close just seems to completely um, contradict that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next suggestion, please. Ilias Diakolampianos is my name from 11 Milota Street. Thank you. Um, my objections are um, similar to Siglidis on traffic. I believe that 1,000 cars would not be able to, <coughs> uh, the Roda Street would not be able to accommodate for uh, 1,000 cars, uh, traffic more, uh, basically because of the uh, exit to, uh, the eastern exit is narrow enough, is very narrow and wouldn't be able to accommodate two cars as it is now and then getting out. Uh, on, uh, on that side of the road. Um, and I, I'm, I'm still, even though you quoted that the uh, transport, uh, the compliance branch of the strategic transport of the, of the council uh, has approved it, uh, I still haven't seen the basis of that approval. What is it? Is it somebody looking at it? Has somebody visited it to have a look uh, how that um, uh, as a part of, uh, of Rhoda Street is. I, I, I don't understand how those decisions are made. And I don't believe that uh, if you look at it uh, uh, integrated, um, both from that side of the street, uh, that that would be um, acceptable. Um, the other shadowing on, on the eastern side and the Rhoda Street side is still too high. And the height of the um, building on, that, on, on the Rhoda Street is still too high and um, outside the council's uh, guidelines. The council stipulated, and after a lot of discussion with the community, stipulated in their policy that the height on the Rhoda Street side at least shouldn't exceed five stories, and the proposal is for seven. So I still feel that the height is outside the policy and the guidelines of the council, and that should be reduced. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, do we have any other objectives that should come forward? Yes, please. Thank you for hearing me. Hi, Stacey from 40 Rod Street. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to offer my objection with regards to this proposal. But I'd like to further reiterate what's already been said with regards to an extra 1,000 vehicles travelling along Rod Street. Rod Street alone potentially could accommodate that. However, given that the only, the only way to travel either south or east of <coughs> this site is to head south along Rodder, along a very narrow laneway, which could not accommodate two SUVs travelling in opposite directions, so let alone a thousand vehicles, to then connect to Bud Street, which with its street parking is single lane, 
to then exit onto Harding Street, which, as most people in this room should know, is already operating at maximum capacity during peak hours, combined with, as I said, a, it's a minimum of 200 metres of single lane to accommodate an extra 1,000 vehicles is not feasible. So I'd wear uh, reference page 35 of the agenda that was sent out with regards to this uh, has not raised any issue with regards to the expected volume of traffic on Rodder Street. That may well be the case, but I doubt that this person has looked further into that laneway that links Rodder to Bud Street and then Bud Street and then Harding Street. So I would request that there be some further investigation into that. Furthermore, being aged care facility, it's expected that family and friends of the residents would visit. On the south, the west and the northern borders of, this, of the retirement home, there is zero parking. So Blind Freddie can see that there will be that the, the nearest public available parking would be Rodder Street. Rodder Street's parking is already at maximum capacity. I can guarantee most of these people in this room would know that because a lot of Moreland City of the council workers here park there during the day. When a single house was demolished and replaced with the two townhouses, that alone increased the number of cars parked on the street to six because they're all now share accommodation. So the number of parking of on-street parking is already at maximum. There will be a dramatic increase in the number of vehicles both using and parking on Rodder Street, which it is, the road is not able to support. So at absolute minimum, I'd request that very stringent parking restrictions and permits be issued to residents only of Rodder Street, not residents of, of Ron. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Are there any other objectors that wish to come forward? No? Okay, thank you. Um, in that case, um, I'll ask if the uh, proponent or representative of the proponent is here and would like to speak. Please come forward. Mayor, councillors, community and officers, thank you very much for... My name is Andrew Mitchell. I'm from Ryman Healthcare. I've got a Melbourne office, but I'm based in New Zealand. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Uh, with, with, I'll keep it brief, because we've come and discussed with community and um, councillor briefings a couple of times in the past and covered off a fair bit of the detail. But I thought I'd just quickly summarise. Just a reminder that Ryman, we're offering a full continuum of care, which is the high and low care, secure dementia care, service care suites, as well as independent living apartments, with the average age on move and in, in independent living being 81, with an average age overall of late 80s. So we're, we build our own, we develop our own, but we're not a developer. Our core business is operating our aged care home for the residents, and we're to integrate into the local community. And so, and we care for the residents within it. Our villages are purpose built and meet the needs of the residents. The purpose of us is that it enables the residents to remain in their community that they've been living in at, at the moment for years. They can maintain their close links with their existing community and their family, their uh, doctors, and and you know, and and they want to live in the community that they've helped create over the last 40, 50 years. And it's our position that they really are entitled to, to do so. And we have, all have an obligation to make sure that that is provided for if they choose to. The main thing about this also, this site has been coming and going from this uh, council for quite some time. There's been numerous applications and consents over time. But we are here ready to start, and we will start as soon as we can, assuming we can obtain consent and endorse plans and engineering approvals. So we just want to draw a line under this, add to the community with the great amenity and continue on. Now I wasn't going to talk about a lot of the detail, but people have been talking about the traffic generation. Now our residents are in the early 80s, we're a low traffic generator. We generate two traffic movements per day and, and with the main entrance located up Bell Street. The Rodder Street entrance is a secondary entrance that's only used by residents and the thousand vehicle movements a day 
our, our traffic engineers, it's more likely to be 650 to 700 off peak traffic movement. So 1,000 is exaggerated, but it's also not going to be down Robber Street. The main entrance from everyone is Bell Street, we're in and out, and with the commercial, uh, some smaller commercial deliveries to just be at the top of Robber Street to turn left into Bell Street. We've worked constructively, or we believe that we've worked constructively with council officers and local residents, and that's uh, and that resulted in an amendment to the scheme after we've received feedback. And with that feedback, um, with the amendments that was presented, essentially remote, uh, resulted in a significant reduction in the objectives. There's obviously some still here, but there is still a significant reduction, and we expect that um, that relationship to continue constructively. The officers recommended approval with conditions, and we just respectively request that the officers' recommendations that are accepted by the council. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just wondering if, um, while we've got you there, we might ask a couple of questions. Um, first off the bat, um, in reference to the, the community space, um, is that something that you'd be willing to consider or something that you could uh, maybe... Yes, um, so at the moment on Bell Street, there's a requirement for a commercial space. Now, we've, we don't usually put that in the village, but we understand the urban design principles and the requirement in this location. We, we, we've we allowed for it, but from, from the consultation, primarily with Clint and his uh, and his group, the, um, the Better COVID group, um, he suggested an art gallery as well as a potential shared space that we can manage to allow the local community to come in, do crafts, working with the local schools and any other groups. That's absolutely acceptable to us. Um, in fact, that's the sort of thing that we do do. We invite schools and groups into the village as well, and it's all part of the intergenerational and, and maintaining the links into the community. Now, that would require further discussion with officers because it is a slightly different change of use, but we believe it's a positive. We, we're behind it, but it does need to be discussed further post any, any decision from yourselves, and that will come back to council. Okay, thank you. Time. Do we have any other questions from other councillors? Councillor Walter? Yeah. You mentioned that um, because the age range of the residents would be early 80s, there'd only be two traffic movements a day mm -hmm. per unit. Does that mean no one is allowed to move in um, unless they're over 80? Or is no. there, what's no. the full age range? So that's, that's the average age overall. So we've got a minimum age of 70. So the average age on movement on independent living, ages in, in relation to frailty. We care for people that just simply need some day-to-day -day help or companionship or um, just improved quality of life. A lot of residents are, uh, are widowed and they have been living at home. Um, the quality of life has been declining. So that's just the average age. Going up from that is the age care, which is significantly older, which brings the average age up to late 80s. So the low traffic movements per day that reflected that is including staff and visitors because half the residents do not drive, they're associated with the care, and that's, and that's, what's, uh, that's what contributes to the low traffic generation, as well as off peak. So, we're not contributing to, to rush hours, our residents aren't getting up in the morning and going to work, and that sort of thing. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Abu. Sorry, um, just to clarify, did you say that the minimum age range is 70? The minimum uh, age to enter into our village is 70. Yeah, and so is that for um, the uh, residences that um, are on what I think is the south side, which are the private. Yes. Yeah, and so um, what happens if, um, you know, grandpa's got dementia and needs a lot of care and grandma can't provide, but she's 64 and he's 80? Yeah. Well, that might not be that big a gap, but, you know, if there's a big gap, like, is there, would you say, well, okay, we'll just waive that six-year difference? Like, when, how strict is that 70 bottom level of age? In, in the disclosure statements, um, it does allow for a resident um, it could go down, and it's a case-by-case, case. and it's usually, if it's lower than 67, it is a case-by-case case approval from, um, from our operations team. But that is a requirement that they are a partner of a resident in the, in the village itself. So if you've got a younger resident that's um, that's younger than someone in aged care or dementia care, they're able to live within the same village as their partner. And so that's open. The other, the other, the only other exception to reduced age on entry is if they've been assessed by the medical practitioners that require um, rest home care or dementia care. A lot of people get dementia at an earlier age, mm. and that's an exemption. Mm. Thank you. Any other questions from councillors? No? Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, councillors. Um, I'd just, just like to um, ask if there's any councillors that have a motion for this uh, councillor of farming. I'd like to move the council officer's recommendation for an amendment as presented in the agenda. I have a second. I'm happy to speak to Do we have a seconder? No, right, Councillor Kavanagh. Go ahead, Councillor Fund. Uh, thank you, Councillor Martin, and thank you, residents, for your submissions. Uh, it's important to note, and it's, it's really uh, right there in the first words that you'll see, this is a notice to, of decision to amend a planning permit. In fact, I've been on urban planning for about 12 months now. I think it's one of the few ones I've seen. Uh, what that actually means is that this site already has a approved permit in place. And what they've actually got is quite frankly a monstrosity. It's for 520 dwellings, it's huge, uh, and it's residential, not aged care, which means a whole heap of more impact on the residents of Rotter Street. So in looking at this, and I did come along to the planning <coughs> information decision or PIP uh, meeting because of the sheer volume of uh, concerns from residents and listen to some of the concerns. Um, in looking at that, I have to make a judgment call here and saying, if we knock this back today, then the, the owner of the site in his hands or her hands has a planning application to build a 520 residential building, which is far bigger and in excess of what uh, is being proposed today, which is 389 residential um, units. Um, from that perspective, I wouldn't be doing the right thing on your behalf in allowing that to go through rather than amending those plans to put this through instead. Uh, I'm here to do what I think is in your best interests. Uh, when we talk about things like traffic, you'd have far more significant impact in a 520 residential building than a 389 aged care facility. When we talk about things like overdevelopment, the restrictions that the council officers and yourselves have been able to negotiate with this developer in terms of shifting some of the building height away from uh, Rotter Street, I think to the south, uh, away from the south end uh, to the Bell Street end and away from Rotter Street mm -hmm. to reduce the impact of overshadowing, uh, I think that's a good outcome. When we talk about uh, the overdevelopment of the site, again, 520 to 389. So I would ask if a councillor were to not be supportive of this, would they then prefer the 520 uh, apartment building that's completely out of place for that area? Uh, that's the decision uh, that we really have to make. So from that perspective, uh, we have to look at what's in the best interest of the immediate community. This is an amended plan, not a new permit, an amendment to an existing plan, and it makes a lot of sense to amend it to this because it's far better than what's in place at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Kavanagh? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, thank you, Councillor Farnley. Um, yes, I um, noticed that Peter mentioned that the site's had a sad history, and in fact, um, I've been a part of that history from, I was on the council in 2005 when the uh, demolition permit was approved, it was at a Faulkner meeting and I was one of four councillors that voted against it along with Councillor Canellan, Councillor Sharon and Councillor De Laurentiis at the time. Unfortunately the other seven councillors voted in favour of its demolition and I still believe that was an error at that time. Um, I've also been on council at the times of the different ownerships and uh, Peter is correct, it's been a uh, incredible run of different owners, including Macquarie Bank and a whole range of other, uh, other owners throughout the process. But I am, su I am supporting this uh, process, partly for what, uh, what Councillor O'Farnley alluded to, that it is an amendment to a permit, but partly for the use as well. The fact that I think the use is a better use than what uh, simple apartment blocks would be. Also, the built form. If we look at uh, page 28 of the agenda, in the northeast corner, we're reducing from the existing permit by 4.1 metres. Northwest, 0.7 of a metre. East, 5.25 metres. Yes, the west stays as is, but the south reduces by 10.5 <coughs> metres. And the setbacks, there's no change in the northwest, but in the east, it's between 0.8 and 6.3 metre reduction to what they currently have a permit for. In the west, the and, and sorry, no, no, sorry, that's an increase, I'm sorry, of, uh, of 0.8 to 6.3 and an increase of 1.8 on the west and the south. But the actual overall height has, is reducing. Um, I do think the use is a much better use. I do think the use is a much better use. And I do, I'm hearing the transport concerns, 
but I do believe that the traffic concerns are far less for this use than what they would be if it was a full-on apartment block. For those reasons, and those reasons alone, um, I, I'm supporting this application, but I do uh, concede that it has had a very checkered history this site. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Uh, are there any other councillors that wish to speak to this item? Councillor Abu? Um, yeah, I want to acknowledge what uh, Mr Robertson said and I totally agree that being an urban planning committee member feels dirty and I never walked out of a uh, UPC meeting where I thought, oh, that was awesome, we're going to smash it. And sometimes we have to choose a, a path where we have to choose the least awful option. And so I'm going to support this because I see it's the least awful option. But also I think that during the conversations that um, Andrew and Ryman have had with the residents who have a very strong group together, and I know there are going to be winners and losers inside the group with whatever happens and what the compromises have been made here, um, I think that Ryman should have realised by now as a company that the community and the city will be watching the way they operate and that we do care about the aged uh, residents in this city and we do have an ageing population, which is why I'm inclined to support this sort of thing. And I hate the idea of um, becoming old and not being able to be near my partner. But also because I think that it's an opportunity for us to keep a very close eye on what happens. And I think that there's an opportunity from the perspective of the community to tap into something good about the site with um, hopefully developing uh, what Andrew has engaged in conversations about, which is the community centre, be it a gallery or a space where, you know, my six-year-old son can go and pat the hand of a 75-year-old man, which he does regularly with his grandpa. Um, I think that this is something that we've inherited from previous governments and a lot of being on this council is to do with that stuff. Um, so I, although it doesn't feel like I want to go home and celebrate it, I will be supporting uh, these, this amended plan. And um, I don't always agree, but on this occasion, I agree with quite a lot of what Councillor Afanli has said um, in terms of what is acceptable enough about this to be able to let it get um, accepted. Thank you, Councillor Abood. Councillor Ryan. Thank you. Yeah, look, I just uh, wish to um, concur with most of the comments that have been made by fellow councillors. Just to add, um, I really want to acknowledge the work that's gone into this by the community, um, the Better COVID people and all of the people in the area, Rodder Street and so on. Uh, regarding the, I think uh, some of the issues and concerns around the, the amount of traffic going south um, on Rodder Street um, have been addressed by the proponent and I think it remains to be seen what will happen. Um, but in terms of parking and so on, we can certainly review the parking in that street and that would be something that we'll be encouraging you as a community to advocate for and we'll, that's a separate process and we'll be doing that um, in due course. So I'm sure that's something we can attend to and look at um, and, and whatever else we can do um, in terms of managing and, and developing this community with what the, uh, presuming this gets up. Um, and so I'm very grateful to hear that the, the proponents are really interested in negotiating and talking about a community space and I look forward to uh, where that might take us and how it might um, in, engender some more community from those from the better Coburg and, and the Rodder Street communities. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Councillor Callaghan. Yeah. Um, I rise to um, support the offer of the recommendation um, and concur with my fellow councillors. Um, the reason I choose to speak is because I recognise that this is um, a significant development um, that has had uh, is going to have an impact on on residents and our wider community, um, as well as having a group of people who have been very passionate. And I thank you for all the time um, that you've put into speaking to councillors. Um, and we have not made this decision lightly. Um, the main things that I do support in this um, development is that it is uh, for for the aged community recognising that it is important to have a variety of dwellings. Um, that uh, represent our diversity and recognising that while we have a lot of apartments going up and uh, a change in seeing some stuff for families as well, 
it is actually really important that we consider having more retirement villages and other facilities that are going to um, look after our ageing population. Uh, the other thing that I do like about this development, um, as well as the fact that it's been designed a lot better than the previous one, and I like the way that it's not just blocks, you can see, um, you know, nice uh, facade, uh, particularly um, on the, the rotter end. And lastly, I feel that the entrance and exit being on Bell Street, which we uh, now recognise is actually quite an achievement because often they will be put on to the neighbouring streets, is something that I hope will um, make Rotter Street continue to be a lovely uh, neighbourhood for everyone. That will be. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bolton. Um, I do uh, think that this is a better use for the site, the proposal that's before us. Um, but I don't um, accept the arguments that have been made that um, if we vote against this, it means we actually prefer something worse for the site. I mean, I actually think that's an argument that has been raised in the past on council um, in past years to, um, you know, persuade councils to vote for some really terrible proposals. I mean, the, rea the reality is that residents have actually held at bay some terrible proposals on this site in the past. I feel that it is very good that the developer has agreed to amend this proposal after it first went to exhibition. Um, but I feel that the amendments haven't gone far enough. Um, I feel if I vote in favour of this proposal, I'm thinking, you know, that would be an indication that I fully support this proposal. Um, and I would like to indicate through my vote against this uh, application that I think uh, the developer of this uh, aged care premises needs to go further. Um, I recognise there have been uh, some advances for the community, but I feel that the advances haven't gone far enough. So that's my reason for uh, voting against this proposal. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Are there any other councillors that wish to... I would like to speak. Uh, Councillor Dorney. Uh, I stand to rise um, at my first urban planning committee meeting um, as a new councillor, as a Greens councillor. Um, and this being the second agenda item um, and supporting, also having to support the officer recommendations um, makes me feel quite sick to my stomach, to be honest. Um, I haven't been involved in the community consultation around this due to um, you know, being a Brunswick community member up until now, um, but I am a gardener myself, so it breaks my heart to think that, that someone's going to potentially lose that space in their garden because that's something that's really important to me. Um, I understand about the amenity and the concerns around height um, and seeing this potentially as a, as a gated community that, that has services that are already available. Um, that said, there's the history of um, this permit and it is an amended amendment to a permit. Um, it's, it's the better of um, two worse options. I echo everything that all the councillors have said till now. Also, I'd like to just to make one more comment about um, the environmental um, standards of this building, that if this um, went to VCAP, which it would, if, if it didn't go at well, potentially that's going to happen, we'll lose all of those as well. And, and the officers have done some fantastic work in um, building in some really good sustainable um, development conditions into, into this um, permit. So, yeah, that's all I'd like to say. Thank you, thank, thank you Councillor Dorney. Uh, are there any other councillors? Um, I might just be very brief um, and speak from the chair again. Um, Thank you to Minister Madden for your legacy of truly horrible buildings and permit um, applications in the past. Um, I am incredibly thankful that we can actually um, amend this one. Um, we've seen some horrors go up around our city. Um, impotent is a, is a really good word to use um, in this situation. Um, this is the lesser of two evils. Um, I am really enthused though that the applicant has stated that they do really want to work with the community and and um, you've seen it with the negotiations with the community um, around this development. So I am thankful for the applicant. Um, I am very pleased with the officer's work and the 50 conditions that we are putting on to this 
uh, proposal. And I, I really do encourage the applicant to really um, embrace the ESD uh, that comes with the city of Moreland, um, as well as um, the additional community space um, and integration within the community, I think are really key and uh, really look forward to, to working with you on those things moving forward. So uh, in that case, I'd like to, uh, now I will be putting uh, part A and so recommendation A and recommendation B to a vote, but I'll be doing it separately. So I'd like to start with the uh, officer recommendation A. So um, all those in favour, all those against, declare that carried. Um, and part B of the officer recommendation, uh, all those in favour, all those against, okay. declare that carried. Um, I'd like to pass back to the officer now. Thank you, Councillor Martin. So uh, the Open Planning Committee have resolved to issue a notice of decision to amend the permit, uh, subject to the conditions outlined in the agenda. Uh, and all residents who have made submissions will be uh, given a, a formal copy of that notice in due course uh, via the mail. Uh, and then that will outline a process if you so desire to lodge an appeal with the tribunal within 21 days of receiving that notice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, give everyone a minute to shuffle around. Moving on to the uh, next item in the agenda, which is uh, 125 to 131 Brunswick Road and 154 to 166 Barclay Street, Brunswick, MPS 2017-171. Thank you. I'll just wait earlier for the applicant outside the room for them mm. to enter. Thank you. Might start. Yep. So there's an application for 125 to 131 Brunswick Road and 154 to 166 Barclay Street in Brunswick. It is for the construction of a five-storey building above the basement car park, accommodating a residential aged care facility. Uh, the subject site is zoned general residential. It's covered by an environmental order overlay. On the screen shows the subject site, which is 5,500 square metres in size. It's indicated, indicated by the uh, red outline on the diagram. It, um, it's from Brunswick Road all the way through to Barclay Street, so it has two street front streets. That's a photograph of the subject site as seen from Brunswick Road. The site is currently vacant. It is a five storey building above the basement containing 55 car parking spaces. It's proposed to have 154 residential rooms. Um, understand that they're all high care uh, rooms for for people who need assistance with living. Um, vehicle and pedestrian access is entirely from Barclay Street. On the screen before us is the uh, ground floor plan, which indicates the layout of the proposal. Uh, is, you can see that we have a access to the basement along Barclay Street here, and we also have a port to secure along this section here, which is for dropping off of, um, of residents and for ambulances and, and other vehicles. The site has a perimeter of um, landscape buffers to the interfaces with residential properties. They range from approximately four to nine metres, although there are areas where there are walls on boundary. That's a 3D image of the proposal as seen from Barclay Street. And then that's the proposal as seen from Brunswick Road. Following public notification, council received 19 objections. 10 of those were called pro forma. And the main issues raised were the building height, offsite and amenity impacts, and the traffic and parking impacts to Barclay Street. There was a planning information and discussion meeting held in July and attended by 11 objectors um, and no changes were made following that meeting. In terms of the key planning considerations for this application, the first one is height. 
Um, and our officer recommendation is contained in the report is to reduce the footprint of the upper levels from both Barclay Street and Brunswick Road. On the screen before us is, um, on the left is what was proposed in the advertised plans. And on the right hand side is what would be approved if the officer's recommendation was supported with a reduction in some setbacks. <coughs> And that's the view from Brunswick Road. So we can see uh, a greater level, set, a greater setback for the upper levels uh, on the bottom <coughs> 3D imagery. In relation to traffic and car parking, the 55 spaces provided exceed the requirements of the planning scheme. And in terms of traffic volume, it is estimated that 15 vehicle trips will be produced through the peak hour. And that, that is within the Barclay Street uh, capacity. Uh, the traffic report submitted by the applicant was reviewed by our traffic engineers who concurred with the conclusion that the capacity of traffic uh, can be catered for by uh, Barclay Street. In terms of amenity impacts, uh, the ground level setbacks provide a landscape buffer as mentioned earlier. Uh, the upper level setbacks, there are conditions to increase these. In relation to overlooking and overshadowing, there are conditions to ensure compliance with the planning scheme. Uh, and in relation to walls and boundary, there are also conditions to reduce their length in appropriate locations to reduce impacts on private open space. So it was recommended that a notice of decision to grant a planning permit be issued. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'll begin by asking if there are any objectors here tonight that would wish to speak against this item. Please come forward, sir. Thank you, Mr Chairperson. Uh, good evening, Mr Mayor and our councillors. Uh, my name is Neville Daly. I'm from 152 Barclay Street on the northeast corner of the um, proposed development. Uh, I dare say that I'm the most affected by this development because there's a structural element. Um, Within the report or the recommendation, there's a protection of adjoining properties during construction is not a matter that can be addressed through the planning process. However, Moreland must consider the planning objectives, which clearly outline that all developments should be fair, safe and socially responsible for all occurrence. Also, Moreland should consider the external impacts of the proposal, which include a basement directly abutting my small commission dwelling mall. Um, oh, briefly, what, what the plan is, is the, this is my house here, the applicant is planning to shore up this whole wall here and the back wall here with 8 metre deep pylons, about half a metre in diameter. This constitutes about 560 metres of drilling around a very small domestic property and then they're going to excavate to do some soil remediation, ostensibly, actually it's, soil remediation is not the real issue. The real issue is maximising the use of their land. Um, the EPA, in other words, the EPA would not enforce the code to put another property at risk. Um, I have a, um, an independent engineer's report saying that, um, in his opinion, that there is a serious risk associated with the excavation and, and the shoring uh, and the altered drainage that will occur because these pylons are going down like that and there's no um, uh, access to stormwater here, it's just natural drainage. So this will actually actually exacerbate the, the altered drainage. Um, now I'll pass this on to Darren and Kate. I don't know whether the council is aware of, of this, but um, uh, I think that if you approve this proposal as it is, you're putting the council at risk because it's a matter of if and when damage occurs, um, I think that you, you'll be legally complicit in that damage. Um, so I, I have a, a couple of smaller smaller objections and I'm wondering why why they weren't addressed. I mean it's 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 staggering really that a modern planning scheme can build this thing back to front. We have we have a um, commercial street and we have a 
a back a backward facing, and we have a we have a residential street, and we have the commercial siding of that. It's just it's back to front. It's 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 quite kind of crazy, and within that plan, there's a the entrance to that is two meters from my front door. Why is a commercial development commercial entry point being located two meters from my front door? I've asked for this to at least be moved, apparently to no avail. There's also a backup generator directly under my front door, front door in, in the basement. Why was not this simple request validated? So, anyway, that's my bit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other objectors that wish to speak? Good evening, everybody. My name is Philomena Costello and I live at 173 Barkley Street, Brunswick. Now, my objections are all the objections that everybody else has said, which we put forward earlier on at the, at the first meeting. Now, I, I haven't understood what the amendment is to this planning, um, this plan. I don't know, maybe <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm ignorant and I don't understand much about planning and stuff. So was there an, object, an, an amendment to this plan? So, so what we I might be able to do if you if you ask you know, yeah if, if you ask your question I might be able to get um, the officer to just summarise in a in a quick sentence the, the change um, for you between the two plans but um, if you can ask your question first yeah, please or your yeah my submission. question is what is the amendment on the plan yep. and and so if you'd like to um, continue with your submission as well oh, with okay. with some of the other things and, yes. and then I'll ask oh, the officer okay. to right. um, thank you okay well the other things were of course. The, the entrances are on Barclay Street, and I can't understand why the entrances to and the exits are on Barclay Street, which is a small street, when there is Brunswick Road, which is a larger street, and there's a, you know, there's a wider street, and, and it's uh, capable of carrying more traffic. That was the other one. And, of course, the five storeys. Now, I thought that uh, that, that area is a residential zone, and it's not, um, um, it's not a five-storey area that we can have five-storey buildings there. Um, what was the other thing? It's, uh, and most of the buildings in that area are either two storey or three, st three storeys, but nothing over three storeys. And the other objection, of course, was having the car, car parking. I know you said you've had um, um, stuff done and that they say that um, there is enough parking there, but we live in Barclay Street, and at the moment you can't park in front of your own house if you don't have a driveway because there's not much parking there at all. So if we're going to get a lot more vistas and stuff like that, we're going to be, there's going to be a lot of trouble with um, parking your own car in your own street. And they're the three objections I have. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. I'll just ask um, if, if the officer might be able to just summarise very quickly again um, for the resident the key changes between the two. Sure. Um, just in terms of process, so the application that was advertised um, is the. So with these images on the, on the top is what the application, how it was advertised. Yep. Um, and through negotiation, obviously, through listening to the objections that have been submitted and through officer working back with the applicant, um, they have submitted revised plans that haven't, haven't been formally substituted. So still the plans that are uh, proposed are the ones on, on the top of the screen. So the original ones. So the original ones that were advertised. However, with the uh, applicant, we have um, discussed changes to the plans and they're shown on the bottom of that diagram, which increases the upper level setbacks. So the recommendation contained in the officer's report uh, is to condition the advertised plans to those which you see on the bottom of that screen. So to, to reduce the upper level setbacks. Yeah, but it's still, it's still yeah. five storeys. It is still five storeys. So there's no, yeah. no change. So, so I won't, we won't engage in debate oh. at the moment. I was just, um, <laughs> just got him to respond. So um, thank you. Oh, yes, no, thank you. Uh, so, what happens with the five stories? Nothing. That's that's it. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it it's exists as in the in the um, officer's recommendation. So the plan, the if, if it's a, a we're, 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 we won't oh. be having debate at the moment. Thank no you. Thank you. Are there any other objectors that would like to um, speak? Please come forward. Andrew Paneris from 123 Brunswick Road. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, my objection is the height of the design. 
Uh, I feel it's also quite a bulky design for that footprint of land. Uh, my house is 123 Brunswick Road, and the common wall that's been put up is way up to the peak of my roof. Uh, so I feel closed in, if that goes in, I feel very closed in. Um, also, I feel there's been no consideration for the neighbouring properties with that height. There's a set of townhouses a few doors up, a two-storey. The uh, west side boundary wall has a one-level cottage there, and that's buried. He'll never see the daylight ever again because he'll be buried between five-storey and a two-storey townhouse. So, uh, it's a height issue I have with the whole thing. I don't have, I have any uh, objections to it being uh, an aged care facility, but I just feel that the living daylights are squeezed out of that piece of land to put in that many rooms, and I question the quality of life for the people that will be occupying that building. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other objectors? No? Okay. Um, in that case, um, I'd like to ask if the proponent or a representative of the proponents would uh, like to get up to speak. Excuse me. Uh, good evening, councillors. My name is Tim McBride Burgess. I'm a, a director of Contour Town Planning Consultants. I'm here on behalf of my clients, Tricare, who are both the permit applicant, the developer, and the future occupant of the site in the event that. Uh, we obtain a planning permit from yourselves. Um, I've got Simon Dwyer from Tricare here with me, so I will be brief um, in my comments because Simon would also like to make a few comments uh, himself if possible. Um, firstly, thank you obviously for the opportunity and thank you to the officers for working with us um, uh, through this application process and for the um, positive recommendation that's before you tonight. We're accepting of the conditions that are being imposed by the officers on us, which is a, the reason why you have uh, the images that are before you that reflect the original application as we submitted it and images to reflect the suggested outcomes that the officers put to us and the challenges they put to us in order to make this building a better building in its location. Um, we see this site as a strategically important site. This is almost 6,000 square metres of land on the edge of an activity centre on a main road with great public transport access. Those parameters are relevant because the planning scheme itself, Moreland's planning scheme, dictates the location where aged care facilities should be located and it tells us that they should be in residential zones, close to activity centres, close to main roads, with good public transport access. So we tick all of those boxes. This is entirely where we're told to place these types of facilities, but importantly, the planning scheme also says something else. It says that aged care facilities have to be recognised as being different to, in form, in character and scale to a standard residential building. And there's, a, there's reasons for that. Um, we have an ageing population. In fact, Moreland, your own documents state that you have one of the highest proportions of um, elderly people of any of the inner city councils. So there's a need. And land is at a premium. So think about all of those people within your municipality that are ageing that all want to stay here. Where are we going to put them if we don't put them on sites like this? And if we put them on sites like this, we need to make them big enough to accommodate the people that we have in the municipality already. Ageing in place, it was mentioned before with the previous proposal as well, is such an accepted um, proposition. It's all where we want to be. We want to end our days in a location where we start them. Um, and in order to do that, we need to be able to provide facilities that are large enough to accommodate the growth of the municipality as well. Every bed in this facility is a bed which an existing resident in, in Moreland can stay in Moreland. Um, all of that said, that's not a free kick. The planning scheme doesn't give us a free kick about being able to do whatever we like on a site just because it's located well. We need to be sensitive to the immediate location and we think we did that with this proposal. We have. Um, landscaping edges in excess of nine metres in some instances. If you put that into context, you've got terrace houses along Barclay Street to our north, which are five metres wide, the entire property. We're double that width almost, just in garden space through the middle of the property. Um, uh, but equally, the design itself, we pushed our architects very, very hard to come up with a proposal that was sympathetic to its location because the scale was always going to be different to the immediate 
for the design that's before you, we chose things like bricks, for instance, because a brick has a history in, in Brunswick. You had the Hoffman Brick Factory, um, Hoffman Brick Works. So there were references that we're trying to introduce to make sure that this building represented its history, its context, and was sensitive to those interfaces as well. And it's for all of those reasons that we hope that tonight you'll support the officer's recommendation. So if there's questions, I'm obviously happy to take them. Otherwise, um, I'm happy to hand over. Thank you. I might, I might um, throw to Simon just for a, quite a brief um, yeah, sure. statement, and then we'll, we'll go to councillors for questions. Good evening, councillors, Mr. Mayor, um, I'm Jim. Uh, just briefly, for those councillors that I haven't um, had the opportunity to meet, um, TRICARE is largely a Queensland-based um, provider of high-quality aged care and retirement. Uh, we have been in the industry for over 50 years. We have a very good footprint in Queensland, and we see, like many other proponents, an opportunity in Melbourne. Um, Brunswick for TRICARE is a strategic acquisition. I stand before you today feeling quite grateful that we actually have the opportunity to submit an application on this site. It was an open tender process to acquire the site. Um, we were up against some of Melbourne's most renowned developers. So to have aged care as a provider on this site, I think is a win for the community. Um, but what I really want to touch on is the existing aged care market that a resident or an elderly person in Brunswick or within a, a short radius of our site is faced with. So currently there's around 1,200 residents in aged care uh, within a, a defined radius and we've put these numbers to council. The existing aged care market within Brunswick and the wider suburbs is really falling short of the mark of where the current aged care market is headed. Um, and it is the high demands um, are coming from not only the families but from our residents as well. So I'll just quote some numbers quickly. Over 50% of the existing aged care facilities in this defined catchment are over 30 years old. Over 50% of these operate with less than 60 beds. So what that actually means is the key services within aged care are not being delivered to those residents. TRICARE's proposal is seeking currently 152 beds. We are offering a high quality service provision of single beds with en-suites, dentists, hairdressing salons, community facilities, um, which is widespread and they cannot be achieved in these smaller facilities. Most of these existing facilities also <coughs> are small parcels of land and will not have opportunities to redevelop given the way that the market is being designed. So I would also like to say that there's only been one aged care facility approved and um, commenced operation in Brunswick in the last 10 years. So where do they go? And we've got a Great design here. Yeah, I think I'll just get you to wind up if you can. Yeah, please. sure, mate. No worries. Um, just want to touch on some of the economic benefits that the aged care um, can produce. Uh, I think it's significant investment from Tricare into the site over $70 million, 400 construction jobs, and 150 full time jobs. So it's quite a benefit to just providing an aged care service. Thank you. Okay, so questions from councillors. Uh, Councillor Davidson. Yeah, uh, I've got a question for the applicant. Yes. Uh, just in relation to uh, the resident Neville's concern um, about the boundary and uh, the fence line, mm -hmm. has that independent engineer's report been considered by yourself? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, there's been extensive discussions between TRICARE and uh, Mr Dale. Um, there's been uh, a sharing of uh, reports, information as the normal process for um, a building permit process, not the planning process, but identifying that there is, in the event that a permit's approved, that there are some earthworks that would need to be done to construct the basement as is standard of any um, set of circumstances. They've been reviewed by both parties. I understand that there is some dispute between the two, um, but that's part of the normal planning or building permit process. Um, as to whether or not a surveyor has done what he needs to um, and is independently checked. Um, so, so the answer is yes, that I'm, I'm aware of it and yeah. there has been ongoing discussions in relation to that, but it's obviously separate to the planning permit process. Okay. So. And just to follow up uh, another point about the basement, um, am I correct that there are no car stackers there? No, there's no car stackers yep. there. So okay. a, the basement's a standard um, uh, basement arrangement. There's 55 cars within a single level of basement, which only confined, is confined to less than 50% of the overall site area. Given how large the site is in itself. Okay. Thank you. Other councillors, questions? 
got a question for the officer, if that's all right. Um, yeah, we might. If, if there's any questions for the applicant at the moment, then we'll go to the officer. Mr. Uh, Bolton. Just to follow up of the other two concerns of Mr. Daly, um, I'm, I must admit I am very worried about the drilling arrangement. I'm very aware of the impact of drilling um, for the Grand Prix had on housing houses neighbouring uh, the Grand Prix um, with big cracks and so forth. So I'm um, very worried about that. But the other things that he raised, which he said weren't as serious, but still of a concern about the um, driveway, like why the driveway couldn't be re um, like relocated a bit further away from his door, et cetera. So no, firstly, in relation to the drilling, I can tell you from my own personal experience, I have a development going up next to my house in Richmond as we speak. So I know that process and I've, I've been through the sensitivities and my own concerns with it. Um, it is, it's an inevitability about um, uh, inner city lifestyle that buildings will be built next to you, whether it's a simultaneously constructed wall or it's a basement being built next to you. And the obligations are on the developer, um, both from uh, uh, providing information at the outset and in the event that anything occurs, whether it be a crack to a wall, um, uh, some impacts to some paint, or the building fell down next door, that the onus is on the developer to rectify that, it, just like any other planning matter where there's enforcement for the same reason. Um, uh, so it's, it's, you know, I can appreciate it's a concern, it's always a concern, but, uh, uh, but uh, it's an inevitability as long as there's a responsibility by the developer to, um, uh, to manage it appropriately. Um, as for um, the Barclay Street um, arrangement for the proposal, we, at the outset, sought advice from our traffic engineers, and we had some pre-application discussions with the council officers as well about the prospect of taking access in from Brunswick Road rather than Barclay Street. It makes some logical sense um, to think that that would be the preferred location for any access arrangement. And in fact, if you think about it from a, um, uh, the, the end user's perspective, having a presentation to a main road would probably be the preferred outcome um, uh, to make them more noticeable. Um, that said, uh, experience has told us that where there is an alternative access point from a non-main Vic Roads road, that Vic Roads' preference is that uh, the access is taken from an alternative location, which directed us to Barclay Street in this instance. It was an issue that was raised multiple times during the course of the application, and we appreciated that. We Professionally, I had my own view about whether or not it would be acceptable or not, but it was something that was raised very um, emotionally by the objectors, particularly during the consultation meeting. As a, as a consequence of that, we actually went and sought that advice from Vic Roads. Um, we provided a letter to the council officers, which Vic Roads confirmed the position which we assumed would be the case, that they wouldn't have supported access directly out of out onto Brunswick Road, because their, their, their gambit is to ensure that their roads are protected, that traffic is minimised. And the reason for doing that is so that traffic has an opportunity to disperse elsewhere rather than being directed straight out onto a main road. So. Ultimately, that, um, uh, that answered the question for us. Um, uh, if we're going to take uh, our main entry in off uh, Barclay Street, it made sense that the front of the building, equally, where um, residents might need to be picked up by an ambulance or taken to and from the site uh, in that type of arrangement, had their front door where they were going to be picked up from. It doesn't make logical sense to put it anywhere else. So, sorry, thank you. Mr. Sorry, Chair, sorry. Can we just have a look at the slide for Brun Barclay Street, please, just while we're talking about it? Thanks. Okay. So we'll bring up the slide for Barclay Street. Do we um, do we have uh, other questions for the applicant? Yeah, just Councillor Boot. Along the same lines as the driveway, I understand um, quite clearly why uh, the driveway is not on Brunswick Road. Um, but I think the question was along the lines of why is it right next to Mr. Day? Daily, Daily's house rather than a bit further into the development so that there's a bit of a... Yep. So, again, it was something we thought about in a fair bit of detail to begin with in coming up with the original um, parameters and the opportunities and the constraints for the site. We needed to have an access down into the basement, um, uh, so the main access for vehicles, which, as I said, needed to be taken from Barclay Street. Equally, we needed a location where separately... Um, things like drop-offs and deliveries of ambulances or, or um, uh, residents that needed to leave in an ambulance could be taken from the site as well. 
those two things take up a bit of the frontage. Um, but pedestrian priority is still an important aspect of how Barclay Street would work as a residential street. So what we try to do is separate the two or three crossovers because you've got the Port Cashier as one element and the um, basement entry as a second element as far away from each other so that there was a, um, a, a lay-by space for residents or for, um, more importantly, for um, residents of the surrounding neighbourhood to stop and prop as they moved along the footpath if there were cars or an ambulance or a delivery van. Linen, for instance, is a big thing that needs to be delivered to these types of uses. Um, uh, so we separated the, those, those driveways as far away from each other as we could. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Riley, you had a question? Yeah, just, um, I'm just, I, I see you're using best practice for environmental sustainable development, but which is, um, I think it's four stars or something, I've yeah. got it right somewhere. But I'm just, and we can't require you to do any better than that, but I'm just curious about whether you considered doing better than that because this is a brand new building going in for future generations and my predictions, even though they may not be um, engineering predictions, are that things are going to get worse. And I'm just wondering whether you considered actually going over and above the four green star rating at all. Um, the instructions from TRICARE um, at the outset of, of um, this proposal was to design a building that met um, as a minimum best practice, uh, both in terms of its ESD credentials, but then in terms of its overall design as well. So they're certainly open to, and, and they took the advice of our ESD consultants, Devon Digester, a reputable um, uh, ESD uh, consulting firm. They adopted everything that they recommended. Um, that's not to say that they're, you know, this is a business, what differentiates this proposal from your standard apartment building is this is a business that's going to be there and operate there and stay there for a long period of time. So they can evolve um, uh, and improve the, you know, every aspect of their business, including their ESD contributions or attributes uh, during the course of their life. And again, differentiating it from an apartment building, it's in their interest to be as sustainable as possible um, from a financial and an energy perspective as well. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Afanli? Yeah, I've got a question for the gentleman from TRICARE, if that's okay. From TRICARE? Oh, representing it? No, sorry, it's all right. Um, you, you just raised a point regarding the fact that uh, other aged care facilities in Brunswick are about 60 rooms, I think you said, and then this is 152 in, in order to justify, um, I think, a range of specialists, like a hairdresser and a specialist. It needs to be one. I'm just curious about that. Do you mind just sort of... Uh, Help me understand that. Look, um, the last four, but just to give you in terms, in terms of scale, the last four aged care projects that have been approved um, within the three and a half k radius that we adopted for the analysis, um, all average is around 140. So there's been approvals in the order of 160 beds, 140 beds, 150. The most recent, I can draw your attention to, was the Australian Unity at uh, Rathcote Place in Carlton, which is around 160. TRICARE itself, we have another proposal to commence next year. This is a seventy million dollar project. That's two hundred and sixty-six beds. So you'll you'll notice going back and looking at the market analysis that these facilities not only are these facilities quite small, but now to accommodate these services and the beds need to be introduced to actually support those financially. So. In terms of these smaller facilities, some of these are around 40 beds, some around 30 beds. They're actually being moved out of the facility to go to a GP or to go get their hair cut or to go to the dentist. TRICARE is going to such an extent now we're even having x-rays um, in the dentist. We can go to a further extent where we can have small operations in the bedrooms as well. So this is not um, a small outfit, if you know what I mean. So we're actually, to underpin um, those services, we do need a critical mass in the development. So, in short, the smaller developments don't provide the services, which is, as was made the point earlier, um, the demand is only growing higher of not only the resident, um, but also the families. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think we'd like to move on now. Um, Councillors, does, does anyone have a uh, motion for me for this? Do we have a question from the officers or? Oh, yes, sorry, we had the one question from yeah. the officers. Uh, I just want to ask it once again, back to this gentleman at 152 Barclay Street. From an officer point of view, um, uh, in the event that there is some damage, you're confident in the redress that he would have? 
Yes, so there's two separate processes that yep. have to, um, before the building could be constructed. The first is what we're considering today is the planning permit process. So what the planning permit process considers is impacts of the proposal when it is built, when it is finished. The actual construction of the building is dealt with through the building permit process. Um, and there's experts that are involved in that process uh, that are not included in the, the planning permit process. Right. I hope that answers that question. Okay, all right, thank you. Councillor Riley, you also have a question. Thank you, just one other question of the officers that um, the exception with this uh, proposal being a residential care or aged care facility, um, it's stated in the report that the site is large enough to allow off-site impacts of the development to be mitigated through the design response. In such cases, the building height at the interface with adjoining properties should be no more than two storeys. Can you clarify with respect to the last uh, resident, Andrew's comments about the height um, of the adjoining wall to that property for us at all, please, and just clarify what, what the height difference is between... Yeah. So I understand the, there's a, a wall on that boundary of 8.7 metres. Um, the key consideration in the officer's re report, which is detailed in the report, is that um, that dwelling of 152 fa predominantly faces the street, so it doesn't have a primary outlook facing the site. Uh, so that is why the... It was more for the... Sorry. Um, sorry. The la that was more for 123 Brunswick, the last person that spoke and not so much Mr Daly's property, I think it was more for the other one. Can we just clarify? The which? west side. Yeah, it was on 123, is that correct? Yeah, yeah on Brunswick Road end, yeah? Yep, yeah, so that's what I'm referring oh, to. Oh, sorry, yeah. So there is a, um, that house does face onto the street, so that's its primary outlook. There is a condition on the planning permit which does require the walls on the boundary to be um, shortened so that it just abuts, they have two boundary walls uh, abutting each other. Uh, that was considered an acceptable response to that adjoining property. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, now I'd like to move on um, and ask if any of my fellow councillors have a motion for this agenda item. Uh, Councillor Pryor. Officer's recommendation. Okay. Um, so, oh, the alternative. Yeah, so, so Councillor Carly Hannan's um, agreed to move the officer recommendation. Um, do I have a seconder for that? Uh, so, uh, Councillor Davidson. It's the alternative officer's recommendation with the change in the facade as a fifth level deleted? No, so I believe, I believe, um, Councillor Carly Hannan is moving the officer recommendation um, and not to reduce um, the, the fifth level. The setback, it yeah. So yeah. with the, yeah, the increases in setback. Okay, so um, uh, Councillor Carly Hannan, would you like to speak to the item? Yeah. Okay, um, so I rise to um, support the officer's recommendation um, considering that a lot of work has gone in, um, as has been spoken about, uh, regarding the um, sensitivities of this neighbourhood. Um, I think the main thing uh, for me to consider, particularly being the, an aged care facility um, and the importance of having one um, in these locations and also recognising uh, my family comes from Moreland and my grandmother is in a nursing home and my parents have always lived in Moreland and I can just imagine um, the demand that is going to be in this area. Um, the other things that I've considered is that I feel that the um, design, in particular the improvements that we are seeing with the setbacks, um, does actually sort of feel, uh, fit the neighbourhood character, um, particularly with uh, recognising um, a lot of the more historic housing um, and stuff in Barclay Street. Um, I do recognise, I noticed the, the bricks and do think that that does um, fit with our, um, you know, neighbourhood character aspects and the history of Brunswick. Um, and I also have noticed there's going to be the ability to have um, some good, uh, nice big trees and things like that, which is another feature of um, Barclay Street. Um, I guess the only thing that in my ideal world I would see would be for Brunswick Road to be an entry and exit point, but I recognise that that um, is not something that we are to be achieved, um, but otherwise I'm happy with this development. Councillor Davids. I'll briefly add to that. Um, I think this application has struck a very good balance for 
uh, not only the residents that are immediately there in the activity centre, but also the future residents of Moreland. As Councillor Carly Hannan has said, we've got an ageing population and a facility like this is required. There's a few key features that really stand out for me. Um, the setbacks that um, Carly, uh, Councillor Carly Hannan has mentioned, um, that increase will help greatly. The fact that um, each resident will have some form of open space, um, the the additional 10 car spaces that you've provided above and beyond what is required. Uh, I'm grateful for that given how many cars we have on our roads and also the fact that this is uh, an aged care facility. I recognise that um, not as many people in that age bracket will be driving. Um, and again, I'll just say that I think it's met those standards and I think the design is quite appealing. It goes beyond what I ordinarily see. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any other councillors that wish to speak to this item? Oh, Councillor Riley. Yeah, just briefly, um, I think this is a very um, uh, another important uh, proposal for our city around aged care, and I uh, acknowledge the the need for that and also some of the benefits that it brings. Um, I think the process for this is, has has uh, been pretty exhaustive in terms of trying to get the department design code to apply and the lighting and, and the overshadowing and so on of neighbours has tried to be reduced as much as possible. Even though the heights for this property are, are beyond what's expected in this uh, zone, the general residential zone, I think the recessing and the squeezing the fourth and fifth floors back on so that in fact we've effectively got a, at the boundaries you're getting the effect of a three, up to a three storey uh, uh, high building on those on those boundaries um, does mean that that we have to consider this as an aged care facility and give it some special consideration under the rules. So I'm uh, more than prepared to accept this is an acceptable response, and I'm hoping that the traffic impacts and the uh, and so on uh, are fairly minimal according to the reports. But I hope we can work with the community to ensure that that, that is the case, and that as a new part of the community should this get uh, approved, that we can actually keep working on, on those aspects of how we work together in quite a, a dense part of our city. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Councillor Farnley. Thank you, Chair. Chair, this is a tough one. Uh, this one's a tough one. Um, and the reason it's tough is because I really want to see aged care on this site. I think it'd be a great location for it. We've spoken about benefits right near Ligon Street um, in Brunswick, aged population, tick, tick, tick. General residential zone, and uh, this is my problem. The house is immediately next door, two stories. General residential zone says that um, the policy directs in the Moreland Planner Scheme that development in general residential, general residential zone should be no more than two stories. There are some exceptions if there are three storeys and you buy it. Um, there are some other exceptions, but I can't, I can't, uh, uh, what I'm grappling with, I can't approve this one. I, I would foreshadow an alternative that calls for the reduction of height from five to four storeys uh, if this isn't to get up. Um, I just feel like it's just a little bit too high. The reason I asked that applicant the question regarding um, what would happen if we were to reduce the scale of this? You know, is it still a profitable uh, venture for this organisation? Um, was because I was concerned in doing that, um, what the implication is, I didn't want to lose this application. But I'm satisfied that the reduction, I think of 18 beds on the fifth floor, um, will not uh, endanger uh, the... Uh, the process and, and we'll, the applicant will con continue with his application. Um, so from that point of view, I, I will be foreshadowing an alternative from five to four storeys just because I'm uncomfortable with uh, the height of this and I think it sets a precedent um, that we don't want to do for that area. Thank you, Councillor Farley. Are there other councillors that wish to speak to this item? I'll speak briefly as well. Councillor Tapanos. Um, Make no doubt there's a lot of positives with this application um, and, and I do uh, concur with some of the comments from my fellow councillors in regards to those features that have been mentioned before, whether it's the design um, and a whole range of other elements. And we do need um, more aged care facilities. I mean, that is a known fact and we've been talking about it as a council 
um, many, for, for many, many years. Um, but I do um, concur with um, Council uh, Farnley when he says it probably is too big for the zone that it is. Um, when you have a look at the site, um, despite all its positives, it probably is too bulky um, and it is leaning towards an overdevelopment in my view. So I think four storeys would be more appropriate than the five storey application that we have before us. So I'll be supporting, um, I won't be supporting this one and will be supporting the foreshadowed if this fails. Thank you, Councillor Tapanos. Are there any other councillors that wish to speak? No. In that case, um, what I'll do is I'll put the uh, Carla Hannon, uh, Councillor Carly Hannon's uh, motion to the vote. Um, all those in favour? All those against? Declare that carried. I now pass back to the uh, officers for next steps. So the Urban Planning Committee has uh, resolved to issue a notice of decision to grant a planning permit in line with the uh, recommendation contained in the, the office recommendation contained in the report. Um, all objectors will receive a copy of that notice in the mail and will be given 21 days in which to appeal that to the Triop Tribunal should they choose to. Uh, the applicant will also receive a copy of that decision and will be given 60 days to appeal any conditions of that um, notice of decision. Thank you. Thank you. So moving on to the next agenda item, item 79 West Street, Hadfield, MPS 2016-59. And I do believe we have uh, two conflicts of interest on this one. So uh, Councillor Kavanagh. Yeah. Uh, as mentioned before, I have an indirect uh, interest by association, by close association. Uh, my son is a real estate agent and I'm aware that he's been engaged with this applicant in uh, selling his previous developments and said, so I feel I have a conflict. And I believe that's a, a direct conflict as I want. Uh, indirect conflict by close association, and so I'll take my leave. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Um, Councillor Davidson? I've also declared a conflict, and I'm just erring on the side of caution with this as an indirect personal conflict. Um, I would be rather be cautious and excuse myself than um, stay for the vote. Yep, so I just point, just one uh, clarification as to whether or not we need to vote on that item. Just looking personal, yes, so we need to vote. Yeah. Yep. Um, so in that case, uh, we'll need to uh, put, so all those in favour of exempting uh, Councillor Davidson from voting on this item due to a conflicting personal interest. And those against? I declare that carried. <coughs> So I now pass over to the officers. Thank you, Councillor. I'm presenting the item at 79 West Street in Hadfield. I've got an aerial image on the um, screen there which shows the site on the eastern side of West Street and opposite of you know, the um, West Street shops. The site's located in a residential growth zone contained within a development contribution overlay and also within a parking overlay. The Planning Commission is sought to construct a number of three level dwellings. They're in a reverse living format. I say that because the bedrooms are at ground floor along with the car parking, as you can see on that image there. The first floor contains the living spaces, kitchens and the like, and has balconies on this level facing either West Street or to the rear. And then the third level is contained to those middle dwellings and contains a bedroom and roof terrace. Public notice was undertaken and a total of 12 objections were received. The main issues raised in the objections relate to amenity impacts, car parking, traffic concerns, overdevelopment of the site and on-site amenity for future residents. The key planning considerations relate to whether it's responded to the design and development overlay number 24, compliance with clause 2201, which is Council's neighbourhood character policy, and clause 55, which is a statewide policy that relates to multi-unit development. I'd like to make an amended officer recommendation. I'm making this amended um, recommendation due to the approval of amendment C159, which occurred last Thursday. And effectively, what that amendment does is slightly alter ground one 
of council's refusal. In detail, um, ground one includes the words and the Moreland Neighbourhood Centre Strategy 2017. Alters sub clause C of that ground and includes the words which fails to make a positive contribution to the public realm. Alters sub clause D and includes the words and the internal amenity outcomes for future residents and deletes part part E. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any objectors here tonight that wish to speak to this item? No, in that case, um, is the proponent or a representative for the proponent here tonight? Yes, thanks. Um, my name is Chris McKenzie from Melbourne Planning Solutions here on behalf of uh, the applicants, obviously with a recommendation before you for refusal. Uh, relatively difficult task to try and convince you of a different course of action. Uh, but it's important, I suppose, for us to explain to you how we've come here today. It's certainly, we still had hopes at the point of first having the officer report released uh, for the meeting tonight that we were in line to have support. And the reasons are we still feel that this is very much in line with the type of development that your planning scheme is asking people to bring before you for this type of site. That explained to you it's the residential growth zone, uh, part of the field uh, shopping centre. This is one of a very small select areas around identified activity centres where the council has policies that positively encourage and invite people to choose those sites as your preferred area to see something different happen. If the vast majority of your residential areas are neighbourhood residential, where your primary concern is to limit the amount of change to not disturb the established character. You have relatively small areas of general residential area, where you have a little bit more tolerance for a little bit more balance of change and respect. Growth zone is the one area where you actually have policy that says we do expect these areas to change, we do expect new development to be different. When we go through the process that this applicant has uh, undertaken, the end proposal before you, which is for five dwellings, double storey at the front, double storey at the rear, triple storey in the middle, it's come about through a series of discussions with officers that has been documented in the report involving three or four sets of amendments. From our perspective, every time a problem was put to us, a solution was proposed. But the end outcome seems to be that every solution has a new problem when it comes to the final assessment by the officers. The interesting thing is the style of development before you has been approved in Glenroy, in Pastor Vale, in Pope Park, and also in Redfield by this council in recent years, including at the last council meeting. When you go through the assessment, the implication seems to be that council's plan is the same. The style of development just cannot be. Where council have said that the development itself is an acceptable response to your character policy, it is well within the four-storey scale that the residential growth zone supports, they then turn around and say, but we don't think it's quite the right response. They don't like the cantilevered design. It's something that you'll see in every other activity centre and on every other townhouse approval for three storeys that have come through this committee and through the council directly in the last few years. Don't like the reliance on a shared driveway with multiple garage doors, which is a, a normal answer for this type of development. By implication, they're suggesting to you, as a committee, your plan is actually want a developer to come here and bring before you a three or four storey apartment building for the Hadfield Activity Centre. We had 12 objectors to townhouses. I genuinely challenge you to say, is that really what you think your community wants? To have your planners telling you that the only answer is basement parking and three or four storey apartments because any version of townhouses is unacceptable. That's what this assessment is saying. And there needs to be some 
clarity given to your, your opinions as to why it is that through three, four, or I think five I'll just get you to, to wind up, please. I will. Three, four, or five versions of these plans, there's not been able to be the clarity of vision to actually resolve concerns. And instead, we're here before you with Council saying this concept just cannot be in your growth zone. Okay, thank you. Uh, councillors, does anyone have any questions for the proponent? No, in that case, uh, councillors, does anyone have a motion for this item? Councillor Riley. Yes, if I, um, I'll propose to um, move the officer's recommendation to refuse the planning permit. I have a second. Councillor Abood. Thank you. Uh, with the amendment as has been outlined by the officer tonight, with those um, changes in um, 1A, or at least the beginning of one uh, point one rather, and 1C and 1D, as as being read, um, there are many issues with this. Um, so thank you to the proponent for for your comments. However, there are a lot of issues around the setback. Um, you've mentioned the awkwardness of the design. I I haven't seen anything like this in my time on council, which hasn't been that long. Um, so the, there are other issues around uh, private open, not meeting the private open space provisions, the failure to limit overlooking, failure to, to have adequate landscaping on the northern and southern boundaries, and certainly not visitable, which is a real big concern to me that we actually make our properties accessible. So for all the reasons that are outlined in the recommendations, I support this refusal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Councillor Abu. Um, yeah, I... Uh, sorry, what was your name? My name is Chris. Chris, Chris, yes. Um, I just wanted to remark, Chris, that you almost had me convinced, so I can see why these um, shop owners have, have chosen you to represent them. The, de the detail is what matters. So I will be accepting the refusal um, because I've actually had to approve stuff that I couldn't possibly have lived in. So, but the detail ticked all the boxes. There's just a lot of small details. The way the front doors face in relation to each other, the widths of the, of the front doorways are too narrow. There's just all of the little details in the design are the reason why this didn't get um, councillor approval. So I think that if you can go back, um, obviously the site will be developed, something's going to be built there, it's, it's going to happen, but it's just all the little details about um, the way the car park, the way the driveways operating, um, you know, the, the <coughs> setbacks don't quite make mix, make the grade, you know, it's just a lot of the detail where often the stuff that we see that looks very similar that we have to approve and we can't knock it back because it will go to VCAT and VCAT will say it's fine, it's just the detail. So I'm sure we'll see you back but um, I can't, I have to um, accept the officer's recommendation because that has happened because they've got the tape measure out. So. Thank you Councillor Abood. Are there any other councillors that wish to speak to this item? No, in that case, um, what I'll do is I'll put uh, Councillor Riley's um, amended officer motion to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. I'll now pass back to the uh, officer to outline next steps. Thank you, Councillor. The Open Planning Committee's resolve to issue a notice of refusal. That notice will be sent a postage to the objectors and the permit applicant. The permit applicant has a 60 day period in which to lodge any reviews to Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. Thank you. Thank you. So we now move on to 29 Sydney Road, Brunswick, MPS 2017-112. Uh, we'll also bring back the other councillors. Thank you. Okay, so moving, um, thank you to my fellow councillors for rejoining us. Uh, moving on to 29 Sydney Road, Brunswick, MPS 2017 112. 
Thank you. So this is an application for the construction of a 10-storey building above what is known as the Sarah Sands Hotel, which is shown on the image uh, in front of you there. It's outlined in light blue on the corner of Brunswick Road and Sydney Road in Brunswick. Our subject site's in a commercial one zone. It's also covered by a design development overlay, Schedule 18, Heritage Overlay 149, and also a parking overlay. That's a photograph of the subject site. Sierra Sands Hotel, formerly occupied by Bridie O'Reilly's Hotel. Uh, it's proposed to demolish most of the structures on site. The red indicates uh, what's proposed to be demolished and the grey outline of the facade is what is intended to be retained. It's a 3D image of the proposal showing uh, the retention of the facade and uh, behind it the 10 storey apartment tower. That's a perspective view of the proposal as seen on the Brunswick Road approach. That's a view of the proposal as seen um, also from Brunswick Road on the opposite side. And that's a perspective view of the proposal as seen from Black Street. The proposed roof terrace um, on top of the um, existing hotel. And that's an image showing that. Quickly going through the uh, floor plans. There's three levels of basement. That's a typical basement plan. Access from a laneway to the north that goes to a, um, a car lift. The ground level contains uh, various services towards Black Street um, and also uh, the hotel use will be um, maintained on the corner. We're also introducing a new cafe restaurant use on the Black Street Brunswick Road corner. And as we move up in the building, we also have provision for um, an office at second level and that's where apartments start along Black Street. And as we move along, we have to continue with the apartments along Black Street um, and avoid space um, of the old hotel. Continue on with the, with the apartments and there we can see the roof terrace. On the corner of Sydney Road and Brunswick Road, we can see um, in this location here, um, the existing Rafters would be retained and there'd be a glass element so people on the roof deck would be able to appreciate some of the heritage material. As we move up, it's a typical floor plate of apartments. Sixth floor, seventh floor, we start moving backwards away from the Sydney Road uh, frontage on the eighth floor, more on the ninth floor, and that's the uh, roof plan. Following public notice, we received 37 objections. Some of the key issues raised were the extent of demolition, the height, off-site amenity impacts, both from the building, car parking, traffic, and the liquor license proposed. That there's no demand for additional restaurants, affects small businesses, there's a lack of affordable housing, and the tower is out of character. Now, the key planning considerations of this proposal will seem to be the extent of proposed demolition, the height and upper level setbacks, and sale and consumption of liquor associated with the licensed premises. The recommendation is a change to the um, what's contained in the report, a slight amendment, because um, only two days ago, a application to VCAT has been submitted by <coughs> the permit applicant for a failure to determine the application within the statutory 60 days. So the officer's recommendation um, changes from one of uh, refusal to one to not support the application at the tribunal. The key grounds stay the same, and they are that the extent of dem demolition is excessive and it results in facadism, that the proposal results in excessive height beyond the design development overlay control, that the Black Street interface um, has an inactive ground level and excessive height and lack of setbacks, and that there's an inadequate response to accessibility, there's no deep soil planting or communal open space. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members of the galleries, are there any objectors here tonight that wish to speak against this item? Please come forward. Uh, good evening, councillors. Uh, I'm Peter Atkins, I'm from Nine Black Street. 
apart from myself and my partner, Dana Harris, I'm here to represent six other objectors tonight. Uh, we're here to support the refusal to grant a permit. Uh, this, I've just got three points I wanted to read out. It will only take three minutes. Uh, this proposal needs to be considered in context with the contentious site's previous liquor licence. I've lived in Black Street for almost 20 years, 50 metres from the proposed building. I have an intimate knowledge of the issues and loss of amenity when Bridie O'Reilly's leases site for 20 years from 1998, uh, closing down on April the 1st this year. The pub became uh, notorious as a beer barn style of venue with a liquor licence for 610 people, which this current proposal seeks to maintain. The major issues we faced, apart from the uh, intolerable noise associated with six to seven hundred people funneled out into our street at 3 a.m. every single Friday and Saturday night uh, was the accompanying antisocial behaviour. Incidents included vomiting and urinating on our doorsteps, public intoxication, threatening behaviour, brawls, bashing, sexual assaults, including rapes, vandalism and property damage. These are all verified by police reports and newspaper articles. Uh, since the pub closed down, crime in the dual precinct has decreased markedly. Residents are determined that the problems associated with the last venue was, are not replicated. And I'm speaking here also for the future residents of the proposed 750 apartments planned for the dual and Prince's Park precinct. Moreland Council must take action to stop these issues from happening again. Permits will need to be imposed to stagger closing times for the respective licensed areas within uh, this proposal to help mitigate these issues. The second issue relates to the proposed residential 10-storey development on top of the pub. The site has a preferred height limit of 19 metres. The proposal is almost 34 metres in height. The scale is out of context with the existing two-storey buildings along Sydney Road and Brunswick Road and does not respect the heritage overlay. The bulk, form and appearance of the building will adversely affect the character of the surrounding heritage place. The extent of the demolition is excessive. The cumulative impact of vehicles accessing the proposed site along the small off-corridor Black Street is unacceptable and will lead to traffic chaos, congestion and queuing down Black Street. They're proposing to use uh, car stackers, by the way. Uh, finally, uh, residents are concerned with the loss of amenity from noise emanating from the proposed outdoor rooftop function space. Um, residents are still unclear what this space is going to be used for. The uh, developers couldn't answer that question. Uh, the council report states that the proposed apartment tower fails to provide any communal space. To achieve council's communal open space objectives, it makes sense to integrate the proposed rooftop function space into the apartment complex. Uh, and also there was no consultation with community. Uh, I know that's not a prerequisite when the developers are putting in proposals, but because this site is so historically problematic and contentious, it would have made sense and probably avoided a lot of these issues if the community was involved in the process to begin with. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other objectors? <coughs> Thank you very much. Mansoon is my name. I represent the owner of the property just adjacent, adjacent to the site. Okay. Yeah. Uh, quickly, uh, my first objection is the encroachment over my property, which has a little blade that tends to poke up over my property. Um, it's, uh, I had received no consultation prior to this, and I was surprised uh, by it. The second objection is the, the open balcony. You, as you can see there, the balcony is sort of open onto the north side, onto my building. And uh, I think this will impose unfair uh, restriction to any of my future development. Uh, on, on my property. Um, the proposed, the third one is the proposed, there's a laneway at the back, which is a common laneway at the back. Um, the proponent has a 10-story shear wall right on the laneway, 
with absolutely no setback from the line Y. Uh, that line Y is uh, basically probably about uh, no more than three meters wide, um, and it has no setback on it. Again, uh, allowing them to build uh, right on the boundary again will uh, impose unfair restriction on my future development on our western space uh, of, of the property. Uh, the, uh, furthermore, that sheer wall of 10 story height will uh, impose unfair shadowing onto our property. Um, uh, the, the last objection I have is the rooftop bar, which is um, on the rendering, which is right on the uh, adjoining my uh, almost one third of my wall. Um, I think again it will diminish the potential amenities uh, of of uh, our residential amenities. Okay, to it. Thank, 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 thank you very much. Are there any other objectors here that wish to speak against? Okay, I'm not sure if. Yep. <laughs> Would have been a good idea to be on the side of yes, the Yes, please. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, thanks for hearing me. Um, so I've recently... Sorry, if you're able to state your name and address, uh, please. David, David Falacchio. Um, so I've recently purchased an apartment at 47 Black Street on the top, top floor. Um, and I did that on the basis of understanding that there was the, the DDO um, 18 overlay um, of 19 metres. The proposed development, which has been stated, is almost 34 metres high. Um, so I'm losing my sense of openness, outlook, natural light, um, and it's all the visual bulk of this development is uncharacteristic with the area as well. Another major concern for me is the access to the, the, the car park in this development is via Black Street. It's only one way to get in, into the car park um, in a car stacker. So I'm, I'm concerned about the amount of congestion that will be filtered through Black Street especially in the event of an emergency where an ambulance or fire brigade might need to gain access via Black Street. Um, and my last point is just ensuring um, that the committee doesn't view this in isolation, but also the other, the other developments that are being proposed within the, within the area and the impact um, that it will have on, on things like parking, traffic, um, and, and amenity. Mentioning some of the uh, immediate proxi proximity developments such as 669 Park Street and 241 to 245 Brunswick Road. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other objectors? No, in that case, is the proponent or representative of the proponent here tonight? No. Okay. Um, Councillors, um, can I please have a motion for this agenda Actually, item? Can I ask a question of the officer, please? Yeah, you can ask a question of the officer, yes. So. Um, I was just wondering if there was considering a consideration to include as an extra ground um, in, for rejection the points that were raised by the um, second objector about the sheer wall, like no setback from the laneway. I'm just wondering, because I'm aware that if council doesn't include all of the grounds in its rejection, that it's not able to argue that position at um, VCAT. Uh, that was considered uh, as part of the assessment of the application. Mm -hmm. The officer recommendation is that it's not an unreasonable impact on that property in terms of its development potential. The key consideration is in relation to that property, um, the subject site or the subject proposal has blank walls facing that, um, that site. So the principle of the Moreland Apartment Design Code is that you um, cater for your own amenity. Um, and so if that proposal, if the North Dwelling was to develop, then it would have to orientate its proposal um, in relation to this, this design if it was constructed and that wasn't considered unreasonable. Yeah. Other aspects about the fins, 
um, protruding onto the, onto his land. That's actually true. Um, and if this matter proceeded to the tribunal, um, that would be something that could be conditioned. So it wasn't considered a ground of refusal in, in and of itself. Okay, Councillor Bolton, does that answer your question? Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, in that case, if we have no other questions of officers, um, I think we'll move to, and Councillor Riley, you're on your feet. Can I? Yes, I'd like to move the, the officer's motion as amended there that the council's position on at VCAT be that no planning permit be granted for application number MPS slash 2017 slash 112 and then as uh, read uh, on the agenda. Yeah, and, uh, and I'll actually second this one from the chair. Thank you. Um, for all of the reasons that uh, the officers have outlined, I um, rise to um, uh, support this uh, proposal to refuse, or at least to um, um, to present to VCAT that we not permit a grant uh, or grant a planning application. Um, we were going to refuse it until this uh, has been taken to VCAT in the last uh, few days. Uh, and all of all of those reasons, I just wish to summarise very quickly. Um, there are huge pressures on this precinct around the dual, dual precinct, but also across the way. Um, we're seeing over, you know, just um, not 50 metres across the way to um, Park Street, where there's another major development happening. Putting that aside, because it's not um, germane to this, but it is a consideration in terms of what we're dealing with. The fact that the demolition will result in um, facadism and is really against uh, all of the uh, what our heritage. Um, policies dictate. So great concerns about the heritage values being lost on this site. The significance of the site goes way back to the 18th century, um, should not be lost. And uh, the fact that, as some of the residents have just noted, that the height is 14.4 um, metres above what is permitted under the, under the DDR 18. So it's at least four storeys higher than would normally um, be acceptable. The setbacks are, act, uh, are greater than required, but um, when you actually factor in the, the height that's being proposed, they are certainly not sufficient. Um, the Black Street wall is way too intense, according to the assessment by officers. Uh, there are no communal spaces for residents, and there is no deep planting um, on the site, and there's no alternative roof garden on the, uh, being proposed either. So. Um, all of, I think the environmental standards are uh, missing and, and the considerations where our urban heat island effect policy aren't really being considered at all. So for all these reasons and more, I, I support this proposal and move that. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Um, I'd just like to state as seconder, and the reason why I seconded this one um, is because I, I was going to sit here and make a big grandiose speech about how um, I'd like to see this type of architecture, not at this type of scale, and that we'd like to work with the, uh, the developers going forward. Um, and I've changed uh, what, I, what I'm going to say um, in respect that we have, as a council, uh, and, and councillors made themselves available to meet with the developers and the architects to seek better outcomes. Um, I note after that meeting, uh, the plans were not changed at all. Um, I also note that um, two days ago, they lodged this with VCAT and um, they didn't even care to hear what um, council actually has to say tonight. So um, the reason why I am seconding this tonight is um, I think this is a completely inappropriate development for the site um, and I will implore um, officers to fight this to its fullest um, at VCAT um, going forward. Uh, Councillor Abu. Um, yeah, I'd definitely be supporting the refusal and I'd like to um, say thank you to some, uh, well, Peter specifically, but some members of the community that have been pushing on, trying to keep um, energy to fight these kind of intense developments for decades. And, it, and I imagine, uh, and I feel like I can see, that it is physically exhausting um, and emotionally draining. So I hope you're ready to hand on to that guy out there because he's going to need to know <laughs> what you know when you go to Queensland or do whatever you do next. Um, so I, I think that when I was also at that um, information discussion about 
uh, this development, and I agree it hasn't changed one iota since it was presented to us and we said, we can't sell this kind of thing to the city, it's just too big, um, yet at almost double the height that it needs to be. Um, there is some implication that this is this site and the Park Street site, but specifically I'm talking to this site, is viewed as a gateway to Moreland and that it should be grand and it should be, you know, great architecture and this sort of thing, which, okay, but when you drive into Moreland at the next arterial along Ligon Street, you have the same thing, these great big, this canyoning of these two giant towers after trundling along Ligon Street. I, I think that if indeed this is going to be viewed as the gateway to Moreland, um, as you drive past the old historical Sarah Sands Hotel into the city, the, the bulk and the height um, and the consideration to the neighbourhood is just uh, way too tall. And um, I hope that it manages to become uh, half as high when it comes back. Thank you, Councillor Abood. Are there other councillors that wish to speak to this? Uh, Councillor Cameron. Um, yeah, just very briefly. Uh, just on this idea of a gateway, I mean, I must say I've had that put to me a number of times in the time I've been on the UPC. It doesn't work for me, this idea of a gateway. I don't believe people are driving along Royal Parade and suddenly say, wow, we've hit the city of Moreland, so therefore we should have a, a building that's of 35 metres in height. I just don't believe that happens. I just don't believe it. And it's another example of why we need mandatory height controls. We need mandatory height controls because we've said we want 19 metres on that site and yet we've got an applicant going for 34. I agree with Councillor Martin. I hope our officers uh, fight this and fight it well at BCAT. And, um, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Councillor Tapanos. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Councillors. Uh, quite often on this committee, we're called upon to make difficult decisions. Um, this is not a difficult decision. Um, you see it, <laughs> and very quickly you come to the conclusion that this is a completely unacceptable um, application to have even been submitted in its current form. And it's disappointing to see that the applicant is not here today and hasn't worked with council officers to actually prepare something that could have at least been properly considered. Um, I'm not going to get into the details, but to mention two major things, which are the biggest concerns. One is heritage and the other one is heights. On heritage, this is one of the most significant um, uh, former pubs um, for not just Brunswick, but I would say the inner city of Melbourne, Melbourne as a whole. Um, it has got some, a very rich history, not just in its facade, but the whole building. And the whole building needs to be preserved. Um, and that is a, a position that I think we need to not compromise on. Um, and this application does not do that. Um, on heights, it is not one or two. It is significantly higher than our structure plan. And normally in our structure plan, um, you need to justify to actually find out why you need those additional levels. You need to provide that additional community benefit to have any chance of actually getting something above and beyond what's in the structure plan. I don't see anything in this application. Quite frankly, the design is quite poor and there's nothing of community benefit in the application at all. So um, the heights are totally unacceptable and they should be um, reduced dramatically. In regards to gateways or landmarks, um, I agree with Councillor Kavanagh. Um, we had this originally in the Brunswick Structure Plan. We removed it. We removed the concept. Um, and we did that for good reason, because we don't believe that these sites should um, be the sites that when you drive into the city, you see a monstrosity um, which towers over the rest of the suburb. Um, it's, it's absolutely crazy to sit there and even imagine what this would look like to people entering Sydney Road, Brunswick. So for all of those reasons um, and many more, we should just reject this and fight it very hard at VCAP. Thank you, Councillor Tapanos. Uh, Councillor Bolton. Yes, I'd like to um, speak in favour of the rejection. And I, you know, particularly um, point to the bits, uh, the grounds of rejection about the extent of demolition of the heritage building as excessive. The and secondly, the proposed height of the building above the street wall does not respect the existing scale of the contributory heritage place and will dominate the heritage building and Sydney Road and Brunswick Road streetscape. 
Um, I think this site and the Pentridge site at the northern end of the city, um, these arguments apply, you know, in um, equal value in my mind. Um, you know, at each end of the city, we've now got massively proposed, um, massively high proposed buildings, 19 storey building at the Pentridge site and here a 10, street, a 10 storey building at the um, site of the historic Sarah Sands Hotel. Um, I, you know, I think the height needs to be dramatically reduced. Uh, I don't agree with the level of um, destruction and heritage. I'm pleased to see that the council officers are giving recognition to the fact that the high scale of the building um, diminishes the um, heritage values. And I'm certainly sympathetic to the ground, um, which is being argued by the objectors about the, um, the fact that when the hotel was operating as Bridie O'Reilly, um, you know, it was operating more as a beer barn rather than a local corner pub. And, you know, I mean, that really does sound totally horrific, um, the ch um, changing of Melbourne from the little corner pubs to more beer barn style, um, style um, establishments. Um, but, yeah, I'm really appreciative of the work of the officers in recommending a rejection of this, and I hope we'll see some of the same sort of work with regard to the Pintridge development. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Do we have any other councillors wish to speak to this item? No. In that case, um, I'll put Councillor O'Reilly's uh, officer recommendation to the vote. Um, all those in favour? All those against, I declare that carried. And can I please have that recorded as unanimous? Thank you. So I now pass back to officers for the uh, next steps. So the Urban Planning Committee has resolved that its position at BCAT will be one to not support the application for the grounds noted in the officer's report. Um, a hearing date will be um, advised to all parties um, in due course. Thank you. Thank you. So now moving on to the next and last item on our agenda tonight, and that is 77 to 83 Nicholson Street, Brunswick, NPS 2016-975, and I do believe we have one conflict on this item from Councillor Raboud. Thank you. Um, yes, it's a... Uh, sorry, let me just find the language. It's a, a conflict of... a conflicting personal interest. So um, I'm a close acquaintance of the current tenants of this particular location. Thank you, Councillor Raboud. Um, all those in favour of exempting Councillor Abood from voting on this item due to a conflicting personal interest? Those against? Declare that carried. So just wait for Councillor Abood to leave and then we'll pass back over to the officers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. This is an application. Uh, for a part six and part seven storey building at 77 to 83 Nicholson Street in Brunswick East. The building comprises uh, six retail premises and 73 dwellings. The um, image up on the screen is an aerial photograph um, with the subject site um, highlighted in um, red as a frontage to Nicholson Street as well as Belf Park. The site is in a commercial one zone, is affected by a number of overlays, including a design and development overlay, which guides um, built form for the site. Some photos up on the screen now showing um, the subject site. So it uh, has an existing um, commercial premises. Uh, and then the images up on the screen there are the subject site as viewed from Elf Park. And those images just show um, some properties um, surrounding the subject site. There's an existing six storey building under construction to the north of the subject site. Um, I've just shown the um, proposed ground floor um, of the development, um, which depicts the, um, the retail tenancies fronting both Nicholson Street and a proposed internal um, public pedestrian link, which links from Nicholson Street through to Belf Park. 
It also also shows another tenancy facing um, Elf Park as well as well as a number of apartments. Um, this image also <coughs> shows that a laneway is proposed at the rear of the site, which connects um, through north through to Glenline Road. Some 3D images of the proposal up on your screen. So that's the proposal as viewed from Nicholson Street and then from Belf Park. So the application was advertised and three objections were received. And the main issues are listed up on the screen there. They related primarily to um, impacts relating to traffic and transport, construction impacts and noise impacts. So the key planning considerations for this application have been the compliance with the Moorman Department Design Code, the DDO requirements, which have um, requirements around the building envelope and the provision of the laneway and the pedestrian link. Um, both of those have been provided. In terms of the building envelope, um, the DDO asks for a building height of 18 metres or five storeys, and this application proposes heights of six and seven storeys. It's worth noting also that the DDO um, requires a consistent um, building height along Nicholson Street, and there are a number of six-storey buildings existing or under construction in the vicinity of the subject site. So there are a number of conditions in the officer recommendation which is recommending support of the application. One of those is to delete the, the seventh level of the building so that it is entirely a six-storey building consistent with other development in the street. Uh, further setback of the upper level building, upper levels of the building from Nicholson Street and clearance of the basement from the proposed lane, laneway at the rear and a notice of decision to grant a permit is recommended. Thank you very much. Can I ask if there are any objectors here tonight that wish to speak to this item? If you'd come forward, sir. Um, my name's Edmund McDonald. I live on Glenline Road, Brunswick East, and I objected to the proposal development on the basis of the impact that will have on the laneway, which runs the rear of the property. Mm -hmm. And I have got significant sort of safety concerns about the traffic flow which will come out of the laneway. So I'd like to be clear that these traffic concerns are not specific to the rear of the development site. They are specific to where the laneway exits onto Glenline Road, which one of 248 and two hundred fifty. So I know that DDO 23 requires a three metre lane be provided. I understand that that is at the rear of the property and not where the laneway exits on the Glenline Road, where I understand the laneway is significantly narrower. The narrowness of the laneway is compounded by the existing walls on either side of the laneway. So the properties at 248 and 250 Glenline Road both have one point six metre uh, side walls, which is where they place their rubbish bins. Well, they don't, one of them has it now, one of them doesn't have it because it was knocked down here. The height of these walls, 1.6 metres, makes it difficult for the driver sitting in the laneway to see pedestrians, and it makes it difficult for pedestrians walking up or down Glen Line Road to see cars exiting the laneway. It's also not actually correct what's been written in the officer's report that there, are no, that there is no history of problems with this laneway. In 2014, uh, Ratnam raised a motion requiring that the speed bump be installed in the laneway, and that motion was not passed, but uh, signage was painted on the floor of the laneway. And when Councillor Ratnam visited the site, she said, upon inspection, it is clear to see that there is a hazard at this location. Which is the summary of the email that she sent to me after she put the motion saying, I'd like to be clear, I don't particularly object to the building or the construction of the building or the size of the scale of the building. What I do object to is the impact the building will have on the landlord. 
and where it exits onto Glenline Road. So the estimation is, I think, 196 vehicle movements will occur from the lane line. That is on top of the vehicle movements which will occur from other developments which are occurring on Nicholson Street. My estimation is that there will be 400 vehicle movements from the lane line each day. 200 of those vehicle movements will be from the south to north, it turns out it's on the front line road, that's my summary. And so 200 of those vehicle movements will be on a laneway that's less than three metres wide between two boundaries, which I don't think is good at all. That is compounded by the fact that the location of the laneway on Glen Line Road is about 20 metres from the 204 bus stop and about 36 metres from the 96. What I would like is more than council to install some safety measures in the laneway. It doesn't have lighting, it doesn't have signage, it doesn't have speed humps, it doesn't have stop sign, and it doesn't have mirrors. All those things are very basic, and all those things would mean that the laneway is safe and that it could be a lot of So that is kind of what I have. Thank you very much. Are there any other objectors here tonight? No, in that case, is there a, uh, is the proponent here or a representative of the proponent? Would you like to come forward, please? Um, there's myself and also the project architect. If, um, yeah, that's fine. You're okay with that? Okay. Um, so just in response to the issue with the laneway, um, we had our um, traffic engineers check that, um, even though it's well outside of the, the site. And the recommendation um, from them, they had a number of recommendations, but one of them was... Um, to install a speed hump, a hard um, speed hump at the end of the laneway and to slow people down. Because a lot of the issue is just about people not slowing down before they get to the pedestrian pathway that's, that's crossing it. Um, so we think that would, that would probably do the job. Um, in terms of everything else, um, just to give you a little bit of, um, bit of background. Um, so the applicant um, in this application, um, they're not a big, big developer, um, just interested in developing um, design-led sustainable housing. Um, and it, it's site responsive. Um, it provides a high quality living environment for residents and it gives back to the local community. Um, the, the apartments are not sort of investor grade apartments. You can, you'll see that there are a range of different apartments um, and they're designed for owner occupiers. So this is to be a high quality development. Um, we've actually been working on this application with the council planners for over 12 months. Um, was a con conscious decision for us to um, work towards a council decision um, and avoid a need to go to VCAP. Um, you'll see that there were discussion plans submitted as part of the compromise to address the council staff concerns and some of those changes have been included um, as recommended conditions. Um, I would usually say at this stage that proposal is highly compliant with the planning scheme but we actually in this case have gone um, well beyond compliance. Um, you'll see in the report that um, the proposal exceeds the um, Moreland Department Design Code standards um, in many respects. Um, it also has outstanding sustainability credentials. Um, it's a single aspect apartments, excellent cross ventilation. There's a green travel plan. Um, there's two different um, landscape spaces. There's one um, in form of a courtyard, then there's the rooftop terrace. Um, in terms of the public benefit, um, there's that central activated laneway um, between Nicholson Street and Balfe Park. Um, that's open to the public 24-7, um, and that goes well beyond the requirements of the planning scheme. Um, the planning scheme actually asks for a, a, a laneway at the end of the, the southern end of the property, which would have ended up with a dead-end laneway until such time as um, you could have got through to the other side, which would have you know, could be years away. So, um, so the, the um, applicant took it on themselves to establish this link um, uh, because it could be done right now. Um, we actually think it's a better position as well for the for the pedestrian link because it comes through to the central part of um, Belt Park rather than at the at the corner. So it's a safer safer position for it. No, just I'll just get you a wind up as well if you could. Yeah, sorry, and um, just a couple of things in terms of the the height. Um, Building is largely six storey. Um, that's consistent with the permits issued in other um, apartment buildings in the in the DDA, except for the one right down on the corner um, near uh, Miller Street, where it has a small seven storey component. Um, and what we would ask is for the council to um, 
to allow that seventh story component as a compromise, you might um, delete um, two of the apartments um, that are facing um, Bath Park. Um, the other one thing just on conditions is um, in relation to the laneway that's adjacent to Bath Park. Um, the neighbour to the north had the option of, um, instead of um, vesting that uh, laneway in council ownership, um, they had the option of um, creating a carriageway easement over that and a section uh, 72, um, a section 173 agreement over the um, over that land um, for the ongoing management of that. And we would like the opportunity to be able to do that as well with this site um, because it, it means that you get a, a more efficient basement layout. Of that. Thank you very much. Um, did you also want to speak? Yeah, if you could be, please keep it to maybe a minute, that'd be fantastic. A minute, okay, I'll see what I can do. Um, Kirsten Thompson, Principal of Kirsten Thompson Architects. Um, also a Professor of Design in Architecture and an adjunct prof at RMIT and Monash Unis. Educate, I'm mentioning that because educator and committed to really good design and we practice what we preach. So important point, some of our projects are benchmarks um, used by the Victorian government, cited as examples of good design. Also a member of the uh, Victorian government architects panel, review panel as well. So I see a lot of rubbish and that's certainly not what we choose to do. I just want to talk about some first principles for this site. It's fair to say that we have good agreement um, with the officers that this is a quality project. And so I'm not going to dwell on anything other than this question of height and why we are asking for that six and seven storeys. Um, it's because we think that the height enables us to obtain much better amenity outcomes for both the residents of this project, but also for the precinct and for the public realm. And interestingly, the seven storey is only 25% of the overall footprint. It's a small component. It's well set within the project so that it doesn't impact on any um, neighbours. <coughs> and the thing about height is that it also enables, instead of a monolithic single big building we could have copied next door, we think the outcome is poor in terms of amenity. Instead, with a smaller footprint of a series of smaller buildings, albeit some of them higher, five and six storeys, is that we get 50% of our apartments with dual aspect, and that makes a really big difference to one's experience. High levels of crossflow ventilation and natural light, quality views from all dwellings, whether it's a park, a street, or a beautiful courtyard. We've got a best score of 71%, which is well above the 50%. We've got really high quality common areas in excess of what's required. Interior and balconies all exceed in size. Housing diversity, three bedders, townhouses do it. There's, there's a real range here. It's, it's made for the community it serves. There are no duds in this place. So that's what this enables. Now, if we had a bigger footprint, we could do it within six storeys. But actually, if we did six storeys across the whole site, we'd lose the lane, we'd lose the courtyards, and we'd lose the amenity. But we could gain 16% yield on this site. I say that because this is not about a land grab. It's about getting a better outcome, both inside the development and for the, um, for the neighbourhood. And it's already been mentioned, the laneway that's created, um, the level of activity, especially with a bit of a mix of commercial as well. We've got um, townhouses like the Brownstones of New York spilling out onto the park, so we've got an active edge. I would say that a number of the dwellings along that laneway are not really contributing to the park, and we think this will it'll make a real um, difference. So, Just get you to um, wind up, please. Absolutely, that's fine. So um, we do urge you to support this project. We think it could set a benchmark for quality and we would like to see you set this as a precedent for serious good design um, that can have a real impact on this precinct. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I note I did give you a little bit longer than that minute, but um, okay. Okay. thank you. You get that for hanging around for the rest of the night. Um, so councillors, um, do we have any questions for the proponents? Question for the officer. Okay. Any question for the proponents just, to start with? Yeah, uh, need, Councillor Riley? I just need to have a it was very quick and I need to know what we're going to miss if the six fifth or the sixth and seventh floors are going to be the laneway wouldn't be part of it, the courtyard wouldn't be part of it. What was the other thing? Are they those two things? Are they the only two things that would be not included if they weren't included? 
Is that what you're saying? I mean, you wouldn't have the retail space down on the laneway either. Sorry, if you could come to the lectern, that'd be, that'd be great. Sorry. Yeah, so the other thing, if you don't have the, if you don't have the laneway, you also don't have that commercial you know, retail space in the laneway as well. You would end up having to convert those to, to apartments. And the laneway would become private open space. So are you saying you can't do the laneway if it's six storeys? Yeah, this is, it's actually really finely balanced. You'd be surprised um, because, yeah, because <laughs> there's a lot of things with this site. So the site's, you know, there's potential contamination on the site as well. It needs to be dealt with. So it's quite an expensive site to develop. Um, and you will see that all the other sites around it have been very um, densely developed and they've been built right to the boundaries. They maximise their site coverage. And that's all just to do with economics. So um, what's happening here is instead of building out and low, the idea is to reduce the footprint and then build up slightly, slightly taller. So if you took off um, the top, then you've got to find somewhere else to put those apartments. Uh, yes, that's a but when you uh, bought the property or whatever, you knew what the DDO was saying. Yeah, the, um, yeah the, no, the, the owner knows what the DDO said. Yeah, yeah so. but, we, uh, but what was decided was um, to provide greater amenity by creating the bigger courtyard and the and the laneway, and then the the um, the balance is to then um, you know put some additional height um, on top to make up for that what you lose with that. So um and, and look under the DDO as well, um, there is that discretion to go over height. Um, it does talk about um, maintaining the six story or the, that 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 consistent. Um, number of stories to Nicholson Street and I talked about a transition to Balfour Park. Having the seven stories sitting in the middle around that courtyard won't really affect those um, those two views. You won't see it um, from the public realm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other councillor questions for the proponents? No, then we had a question for the officer. Um, we just wanted to go back to the um, drawing of from Balfour Park. No, just yeah, that, that one there, the one you said. Um, sorry? No. Uh, the, other, the other one, sorry. The bell oh, this one here. Uh, no, oh, the next one. <laughs> no, the yeah. no, this one here, right? Um, I see the stairs on the left hand side. I, I'm, I'm trying to look at the plans to see how far away the, the lift is from that point. I realise that it's got lift access from the front of the property, but if someone went to Belf Park, how far would they be from the lift if they were, um, had disability access? Um, um, yeah, I think it's about three meters. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's at grade, and then there is a lift. Yeah. Uh, and the, the lift is, I was trying to work out where the lift was. That's the public lift, yes. and there's a lift. Ah, that uh, that's one. Thank you so much. Right, okay, excellent. And that's at grade. Yep, okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Um, I also had one question um, for the officer around um, lighting of that laneway. Um, I'm not sure if that has been included as part yes. of the proposal. It has? Well, there's an amendment, sorry. There's an amended, um, the office has amended a motion which includes those um, improvements or maintenance of the laneway. Sorry. Thank you, just Councillor Riley. Mm -hmm. That yes. isn't included in the officer recommendation that I've just So, councillors, um, there was a call for a amended proposal, which has been circulated to you. Should you wish to um, move an alternative motion to provide for the light, lighting of the laneway? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, councillors, if there's no other questions, um, I'd like to, uh, if, if <coughs> councillors, if you have a motion uh, for this agenda item. Uh, Councillor Farnley. I'd like to move the council officer's recommendation with the amendment for the lighting of the laneway. 
So that is for six storeys um, with the amendment of the laneway lighting inclusion. Thank you, Councillor Farnley. Uh, do I have a seconder for Councillor Farnley? <coughs> Councillor Kavanagh. Oh, sorry, I moved it for Councillor Riley. Or Councillor Riley, then. Thank you, Councillor Farnham. Thank you, Chair. Very briefly, um, I, I'd like to see this uh, property uh, developed. I think it's a great uh, application in terms of the amenity and the design and, and the thought that's gone into it. And um, I congratulate the, uh, the applicant for um, putting something like that forward rather than what was next door. Uh, I don't accept that uh, we need to give you the extra story um, in order to get a laneway or extra amenity. Um, clearly, uh, the buildings next door are six storeys. Uh, there should be consistency across the board. Um, I'm sure you can get even better amenity and even better laneways if we gave you eight or nine or ten storeys. The line has to be drawn at some point. It's six storeys uh, in this precinct, uh, and that's what we need to uh, abide by. So I thank you so much for putting this application forward because it is a fantastic one. I, I wish you luck, and I hope... Uh, it gets up and especially that interface with the park at the back, it's going to be great for the residents. It just needs to be at six storeys. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Farley. Uh, Councillor Riley? Yeah, look, um, you know, it was, it's required to be under our plans to be at five, well, it was expected that it be at five storeys and you've applied for seven and uh, I'm reluctantly supporting the officer's six storey um, conditioning of the permit. And I was of the of the understanding, or I kind of believe that you um, that the, this had somehow been um, conveyed and to you. So I'm a bit surprised to hear that the, the laneway and the courtyard and, the, and some of the retail aspects are at risk. However, I'm prepared to um, second this motion in the, in the hope that the good design will get through. I think the idea that this has got a best score of 71 percent. Um, all of the apartment design and the lighting, uh, and there are many aspects of this which I can uh, elaborate on, um, are very, you know, welcome to see. I, and I think if we do comply with the sixth story by going up one above what's, what would be permitted, brings it in line with the other buildings in the area and it, it, it fits the DDO 23 um, condition. So I think in terms of trying to get the balance right and have an acceptable outcome, uh, these are some of the reasons why I wanted to see and support this motion as, it's, as the uh, officers have negotiated. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Uh, Councillor Bolton. Um, I can absolutely uh, relate to some of the good design features in this building, but I'm actually going to vote against because I just feel that there's no point in council having all this public consultation um, around um, our structure plans and then to continually make exceptions to it in terms of height. So yeah, I'm going to vote against for that reason um, because I just think it sort of makes us a laughing stock amongst a lot of residents. Um, if, you know, I mean, if we didn't have that big consultation that resulted in certain height limits being preferred. I think maybe I might feel differently, but I just feel that, um, you know, it's sort of, yeah, it's a bet betrayal of that democratic process. So I'll be against. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Are there any other Councillor Tapnos? Oh, thank you, Councillors. Um, I'm also rising to speak against um, and echo a lot of the sentiments that Councillor Bolton mentioned. and. Uh, I do that in acknowledging the good work that's been done on this application and its good design features. Um, but I do think that when you have a look at the structure plan, it uses the word exemplary design, something that is way above and beyond special. Um, and I don't think we're quite there with this application to justify any changes. And I just simply can't understand why we can't have good design within the height limits. I mean. The height limits are known, the structure plans have been embedded into the planning scheme, the DDO is now part of our planning laws. Why can't we just have good design within the envelope that our community has agreed to? In councils, I know that it also says discretionary, something that we are um, campaigning to change. But we here on this committee, when we are willing to allow um, even one story more, uh, we're basically undermining our own argument 
for mandatory controls. We sent the development community a very clear message um, and that it's going to be accepted um, when really what we should be doing is setting the message of stick within the height limits um, by not approving um, these additional um, heights beyond the uh, structure plan heights. Um, and I think that's what we should do. And I think that if we consistently did that, we will notice that applicants will get the message. Thank you, Councillor Tapanos. Are there any other councillors that wish to speak to this item? Um, I'd just like to speak from the chair um, in regards to, to this item. Um, I really do um, think that this is a, a much better um, application than what we normally see come through. Um, so I, I really do thank um, the proponents for putting this together. Um, I, I think the 71 best score is something um, you should be proud of and, and definitely the passive activation through the walkway. Those elements, um, are, we, we really do enjoy um, seeing that and I think that would be a great uh, feature of the site. Um, by my count, I think we have about 59 conditions attached uh, to the officer recommendation. Um, so I would like to um, thank the officer, officers for putting this together. Um, I also think that um, the structure plan, plan looks at consistency and um, we, we have six storeys right across the board on Nicholson and if this went to VCAT tomorrow, um, they would give them six storeys. Um, so uh, on those grounds, as well as the fact that this is um, a much better design than we're used to um, seeing come through, um, I think we should support the officer recommendation on this one. So. On that note, uh, I'd like to put the uh, motion to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Declare that carried. I'll now pass back to the office for next steps. Planning committee to issue a notice of decision to grant a planning permit. Uh, a copy of the notice will be issued to all objectors and the applicant. The objectors will have 21 days in which to appeal council's decision. The applicant will have 60 days in which to appeal any conditions of the approval. Thank you very much. And so, councillors, as there is no urgent business here tonight, I would uh, like to take this opportunity to thank all the attendees for tonight's uh, meeting and to those watching at home. And given it is our last meeting of the year, I'd like to wish everyone a safe and happy Christmas period. So thank you very much. I now declare the urban planning meeting closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.